All right, we're live. Welcome to the Sal's Cast. You know they say that you know in show business, you gotta roll with what you got. So today, this we're just gonna be pro- fucking fr- professionals. Okay, we had some last minute hiccups, but we're back, baby. Uh, welcome to the Sal's Cast, episode fifty eight. This is where finance meets romance, but something tells me we're not gonna do too much finance today. Uh oh. We're talking romance. It's pretty boring. Okay. Oh, exactly. <laughs> it's pretty boring. So, um, my name is Adam Salznick, and I'm here to help you men improve your status. Now, whether that's financially, or that's your sexual market value status, and just win in life. Boom. So what do we say? Not all the time. We want to see men get paid, paid get laid, laid, and, and do, do it, it your, your way. way. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Um, we had a last minute situation mm-hmm. where a guest named AMS, Alpha Male Strategies, the other gentleman that was going to be here today, wasn't able to make it. Oh, no. We had the lovely Natalia, who's yes. always sitting over there, yes. as you know, say, hey, listen, I can be an alpha male for the day. Oh. <laughs> hey, right, I don't know about all that. that but <laughs> but uh, I'm convinced. And then we have what I would call our producer, Eric Tate, over there, who says, listen, I've got some things I could say. <laughs> yeah. Eric. If we get Eric talking today, this show's going to go getting fucking him viral. Talking. If I we can get oh, Eric he's talking. Talk. Okay? Yeah, he's gonna talk. But everyone knows the home team here Natalia, myself, and you don't know Eric, but he helps produce the show. But this is not about us, yeah. is it? No. This is about you, the audience, and the experts that we have on today. And we got a mother fucking expert on today. So let's meet our guests. So to my left, the lovely lady in red. You know that song, Lady I in do red? know that is that song. You, is I, that why you dress you like know. this? Yes, it okay. is. She knew you were going to um, sing. It's a power Janelle color. Janelle Gordon. Correct. Let me understand exactly where you are. You're an intimacy expert. Sexpert. Sexpert. Correct. Oh, why didn't put someone put the S in there? <laughs> yes. And you basically teach people how to live an outstanding orgasmic life that's in and out of the bedroom. Correct. Wow, wow, we wow, wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then just um, as far as loveliness goes, <laughs> Victoria Vesh. A.K.A. Hi. Fresh Vesh. What's up? What's up? <laughs> she needs a shot. So the fact that our we producers do. have not brought a shot in yet, they're either fucking not listening Where or they're they? drinking or the they're alcohol. Where's the tequila at? Where's though? the tequila at? Anyway, uh, beautiful, beautiful on the outside, but even more beautiful on the inside is what I'd say Aww, about Victoria. Thank you. Uh, Sports, Illustrated, Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. Yeah. Boom. Bang. Uh, you also host a podcast validated by Victoria. Yeah. Check. Uh, you went to law school. Yeah. At some point. At some point. Okay. I've lived 80 years in 29. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but also, you've had some health challenges. You were yeah. a, a brain tumor survivor. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, go have a brain tumor and look this good, motherfucker. Yeah, All right? exactly. Let's see what happens right there. Let's see if it happens. <laughs> and um, so, here's the deal. Um, today, I, I would like to address the camera. Let me, let me break that fourth wall. Okay, yeah. listen. A lot of times we talk some finance, we talk some romance, we talk dating, we talk career advice, we talk relationships. We kind of like play that balance here on the Sazcast of basically how men should operate. One of the things I always say is like, you don't earn money just, oh, I have money now. It's so you can acquire things or get women or live the life you want. Money doesn't just live in a vacuum, okay? So um, <laughs> that wasn't a sexual reference right there. But today is going to be one of those episodes where it's like we are unabashedly, unashamedly going to have a nice little sex talk. We have a sex expert on the freaking panel today. So let's utilize her Please, brain use me. and her nice big hands hearts. Heart my nice big heart to understand what you gentlemen out there should understand about Pleasing a woman yes. in the bedroom. Yes. Is that important. a fair assessment of what we're going to do here today? Absolutely fair. Okay. So let's do this. Um, I uh, I edified you guys. So let me kind of learn a little bit more about you. Let's go down the list here. Mm-hmm. Um, and just tell us, as usually what we ask people is, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. Tell us your relationship status mm-hmm. and tell us how you make your money. Okay. So Wonderful. go ahead, Janelle. All right. So my name is Janelle Gordon. I'm a tantric intimacy sexpert. That means through one-on-one private coaching, uh, group masterminds, global luxury retreats, and online courses, I help entrepreneurs to really shake any shame that's been hindering their sexuality and help them to embrace intimacy and live more the outstanding orgasmic life. So um, that was my elevator pitch. You but, know what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And your relationship um, my status? My relationship status is my mm-hmm. heart belongs to Shiva. That's a long story. But um, I was in a relationship for about um, 
uh, a year, 15, 15 months, but a year exclusive. Mm -hmm. And he's actually here with me. He's um, a dear supporter. I asked him to come and to be here with me. And uh, he showed up. So uh, we split uh, about three months ago. He's 25. I'm 41. I know I don't look it. But um, actually, he's 26. I lied. Okay. So, Hold on. Yeah. Get yeah. your pen. Okay. So you're 41. Correct. So we're the same age. Correct. Bang. 81. Uh, homie over there. 6'8". 6'8"? Eight, eight eight? Yeah, 6'8". Eight, eight, All right. Eight, I was about to talk shit. Maybe I won't right now. <laughs> yeah. But he's how old? He's 26. He's 26. Mm -hmm. So he likes him. He likes him like fine wine. Yes, he's okay. he's a he's mature in a lot of areas. Um, he's entrepreneur driven, and he's just he does he's he's alpha. He has no nonsense type of guy. He don't play games. He does okay, not gotcha. like you know like the hoes are fun, but like when you talk about really like getting him, like he'll never settle with a hoe for sure. Never settle with a hoe. No. Break that down. Like he might fuck hoes, but he's not gonna ever like take them seriously. Mm. But does anyone? Yeah, I was well, gonna say. I mean, yeah, no does one really anyone... does. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Correct. Is this what they Correct. say? Huh? This is we're, true. We're, we're doing a lot of quoting of rappers we right are. now. <laughs> this is a rap segment. Okay. Here. So yeah, so all that's right. that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive head first into all that. Oh, how I make my money? Yes, go. So, so um, how I make my money is through one on one intimate. Is this close enough or is You're that okay? good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Through my one on one intimacy coaching. So I charge, you know, upwards of um, 10000 for a two day re mini retreat, which is four hours basically a day. Um, and uh, if you want to coach with me just one on one, it's a thousand an hour minimum, depending on your issue. And then my retreats are like 20 people mm. come together, mm. uh, men and women, singles and couples alike, and they're paying around 5000 for a, you know, four day. So it's 10K for a two-day retreat. With me. And that's just with no yeah. one else. That's just with me and the, the, the couple or if I'm just working with a man or woman alone. Yeah. Boom. So okay. I'm, yeah, I'm charging. And it's 5K lot. for what? Um, it's 5K if you come to a group retreat with group? 20 people. Okay. And I'm charging 1000 an hour minimum. Anywhere from 1000 to to 1500 depending on the challenge. So you know your prices. I know my You're prices. You're like, I'm not even playing around No. Here. If you want a 15-minute consult, it's like, you know, what if I charge like two uh, 250 you know, for an online, like I don't do nothing, nothing for free. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to introduce you to something called Manect. Uh, yes. After this. Yeah, we're we'll going to see what we can do okay. there. Uh, an application, an app, who says that? An app an mm -hmm. that okay. we have here. Cool. Uh, well, we're going to get into know that a little bit more. Victoria. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm what have you great. been up to? It's been a couple months since yeah. you've been on the show. Mm -hmm. I'm still single. Well, you're still single. We'll just say, we're just going to go ahead <laughs> I don't and say know that. why. Well, we're still single. Okay. So, yeah, fill us in on what you've been up to. I know you've been doing stuff with like the hurricanes and yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you've got a big heart. You've been helping people. I, I'll start with that first. I've been um, helping out with Hurricane Ian relief. Yeah. I've been going to Fort Myers Beach since the hurricane passed been bringing supplies like started it just started as like myself then it was me and my friend then it was me and a, another friend and now it's like 50 people going on saturday nice. cooking warm meals um so if anyone wants to get involved and help out like directly we're doing direct handoffs to um people who've survived and are homeless now which mm. is so sad like you just see like photographs of families like belongings everywhere it's kind of like a war zone out there and mm. i'm just really you know it's only two hours away from here so yeah, like crazy. you know just want to be helping our neighbor yeah show, yeah, yeah. Oh, for, for sure for sure yeah we would love that um so yeah we're still going strong and we still will we're not going to forget about the people in fort myers so um awesome. that's something i've been doing uh, i love that since after the hurricane so yeah check out my instagram if you guys want to help out um but yeah uh from eastern north carolina i grew up on a buffalo farm somehow ended up here in soflo and went to law school was an nba dancer <laughs> was a sports illustrator this past year i've done a lot of random things she's doing it all <laughs> amazing yes, yes. Yeah. natalia love it how are you? How I'm have you great. been? It's I'm been phenomenal. So, I, I feel like you're always so far away from me. I know. Well, I'm here today. <laughs> and now you're here in no the way. mix. I'm here. I'm what, here. What do you want the people to know about Natalia's life these days? Uh, Natalia's life these days, I am single. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single. Uh, I work here at Valuetainment, uh, and uh, I love my job. Mm -hmm. That's really all. There it is. That's all <laughs> you're willing to reveal. I'm going to share it right now. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, our friend over there, Eric Tate. He's the uh, younger brother yeah. of, of another Tate. There's a third Tate brother, if you guys didn't know. <laughs> yes. Um, if you didn't know. He just needs the and glasses on. It's, and it's, not a, it's not so much that he's um, blood-related, 
but they're like simpatico of the mind. Now, mm-hmm. if he spoke, which he probably won't do a lot of today, he would have got canceled I'll, I'll in about myself. 10 seconds. <laughs> 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 but he so is as red pilled as it possibly gets. <laughs> And uh, he is turning red, and I'm loving every second of that. Yay. Anyway, oh, let's talk out. a little bit He's relationships right dress. now. By the way, if anybody here at Valuetainment is listening, we've been asking for tequila shots for about 20 minutes now. <laughs> Check your phone. So either they don't understand English or they drank all the alcohol. That's so we'll happened. see. We'll see what happens. Um, anyway, <laughs> on last episode, we 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 brought up a, a clip about Chris Rock. This is going to be a segue into where money and status of a man and uh, everything that comes with that how it basically encompasses relationships and dating and sex. And then I'm going to kind of tee it up to more of a sex conversation. But basically is this, Chris Rock basically said that only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. Mm. Okay? And that a man must provide, right, in order to feel loved by a woman. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then he went on to basically say, when you're talking with your guys about your new girl, their first question is, you know, what she look like? Like, let me, mm-hmm. let, 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 let's hear it. You know, show me a picture of what she look like. Yes. And when you ladies are basically saying like, all right, tell me about the guy. Your first question is. How much money does he make? Boom. And there it is. So what does he do? How much money? What What's he, he bringing to the table? Mm-hmm. Can the mother sucker fulfill a dream or not? <laughs> That's correct. Okay. Unless yeah. you're me and you just like really tall, really built, young looking men. And That's don't it. care That's how much thing. money they make. Because you're the Mama Milf and you're going to take care of young men. I love that. That is my new nickname. Mama 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 Milf. Milf. Hashtag Mama Milf. This is what we're doing here. We're giving people nicknames. Changing lives. We have to hashtag this right now. Mama Milf. Yeah. In the house. Now, do you have kids? (laughs) I do. I have a seven-year-old. A seven-year-old. Yep. Okay. He's a little prince. Of course he is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That guy's going to know. That guy's going to have some game. (laughs) He does. Okay. And then when we played this clip from last week. Uh, Allie, she goes by the um, the real femme sapien. I know she's Allie. you know Allie. Well, I've been on her show. Okay, we, great. We, she's a lovely gal. Yeah, We're a big huh? fan of Allie. Yeah. She's an awesome girl. Yeah. She oh. basically was kind of reacting to mine. to um, to this Chris Rock clip, oh. and she's like, "It's hard to stay in love with a broke guy." Okay, like, have you ever tried? I was like, "No, I don't. I don't. I don't do that thing." But <laughs> so it was just like, "All right, cool." And I basically was like, "All right, well, this is exactly why we do this show." on valuetainment money and we incorporate so much about relationships mm. and sex and dating again because money doesn't live in a vacuum um here's where i want to start you've said this quote janelle gordon in the house here we go she said you said this men crave freedom mm-hmm. okay women crave commitment that's all correct. right so we got freedom versus commitment women ask for a commitment and it freaks men out because it impedes on their freedom correct men wanting freedom scares women because of the uncertainty of that commitment. This is your quote. I literally just did that. Explain <laughs> Exactly. I've done our research. Yeah, I know. So Janelle, explain exactly the difference between uh, freedom and commitment. Yeah. So for men, men are wired for freedom. It doesn't matter what part of the country, the globe that you go, how much money they make, they want freedom. They want freedom to be the man that they know they can be whether that's been instilled in them or whether they've followed a mentor and go out and leave their mark on the world, if you will. Even if it's just being a plumber, they're gonna be the best damn plumber they can be. Or as being a talk show host, they're gonna be the best damn talk show host, right? right. You know this. Or being this gym rat, I can see. Look at these muscles. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be the best gym rat in the world. But so that's what men inherently want and desire. Everything else is kind of a B-side. Like they know obviously they need to procreate so their lineage continues. However, freedom is at the top of their list. Now women, it's the antithesis of that. We don't really care. Now women today, I'll say, want freedom. But that's because the polarity is all fucked up. But women, before this whole culture came in that women run the world, women crave commitment. Mm -hmm. Why? We are, and yes, I'm going to say it, we are the weaker race race gender uh, gender. my bad sorry we're good let's not get in trouble we're the weaker gender we are not um we're superior to men or or men are superior to us rather as far as physicality physicality and in the roles that men play in life they are the leader and we're to follow so by nature women we want commitment because we want to feel secure in the capacity that a man will provide for us so that we can raise his offspring. That is innately how women are programmed, we're programmed. 
but now society is messing that up. So women, if we don't like on a first date, I said this on a recent, um, I think it was on fresh and fit and I Mm -hmm. reposted it on the first date. Women are already imagining in their mind. Could this person be my husband, my provider first date, first date. Is that true, ladies? Yeah. If, if that's I've someone that they take serious. Mm-hmm. Victoria? The more modern the woman, yes. that will be less. Really? Correct. Okay. But the more traditional, like they haven't been too polluted by modern feminism, that is at the top of their thing. True. Where men, their first reaction on a date is, how quickly can I smash? Yikes. Right? They're not, because remember, freedom. They don't, they're not like, can I wipe this chick up? They're like, can I smash? And how much money is it going to take me to do that? And how quickly is she going to give it up? Yeah. Would you say that's true, Adam? Oh, uh, yeah, for the most part, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with that being said, it's it, it's an opposition of polarity, which is what's mm-hmm. needed in relationships. By the way, relationships don't end for lack of love. They end for lack of sexual polarity. So anytime the sexual polarity is gone, the relationship is gone. What do you mean sexual polarity? Meaning when I, I, I'm first meeting you, Adam. Yes. And I'm so attracted to you. Wow. I mean, How you doing? I don't normally go for white guys, but you've, you're turning me. White guy. Okay. You <laughs> Listen, your eyes that just, I lo- the suit. Right, fuck you're, it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're very Time. dapper. You Thank know, you. your smile, Appreciate your confidence. That. I'm loving it. So we first meet. You mm-hmm. take me out on a date. Somewhere yep. good. Because, you know, like, come on. Come Mama me. Melf. Hello. Taking Mama Melf someplace nice. That's right. Yes. You're taking me nice. <laughs> and the first time we, we have that, like, attraction, you know, that polarity, that like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to smash, right? So you're we, saying the guy has that or the girl both, has that? Both. We both oh, have really? it. Yeah, okay. we both have it. All we right. smash. How you do it? And exactly. And that polarity is there. You're like, oh my gosh. And then you thinking, when can I hit again? And the woman's like, oh my God, when when can I get married? You know, but whatever. The polarity's there. Now over time what happens in relationships and marriages is that polarity weakens because couples do a lot of bad things that they shouldn't do that weakens the polarity. And so over time that sort of dissipates. Mm. And then that's when guys are like bored because the the woman isn't, you know, giving blowjobs. She's not giving it out. She's, you know, having sex just on holidays, birthdays and, you know, things like that. What I want to understand is what this polarity means. Okay. So the polarity is, and we're going to do this. So I hope I don't offend anyone that's like, you know, doesn't, take a choose a gender but be, you okay. offend all you want uh, you know offend. we're all going to be grown up so here. the polarity is the component of masculine and feminine dynamics in in energy in this life so there's a positive and a negative pole of energy right protons electrons mm-hmm. there's not two positives and two negatives right if you have a battery you have mm-hmm. batteries and all this equipment mm-hmm. if you put two negatives in will it work Mm-mm. No, you need a negative and a positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's down to the very basics of, of science, of nature, of animals in the animal kingdom. There might be exceptions, and I don't care about that. But the rule is there's male and female, positive and negative poles gotcha. of energy. Polarity. This is why men are not attracted to super masculine type of women. Correct. And why feminine women aren't attracted to like beta feminine male. men, beta Correct. men. Correct. Because yeah. they need that polarity. That polarity is what keeps the relationships alive and strong. Now, over time, that polarity weakens because men have moved into sim culture and women run the household they run the show they control how much sex a man has how much if he can go out with his friends and all this stuff so that polarity starts to like just get muddied Mm. and then men go seeking other options because they're like i don't want to fuck my wife anymore like i she's the mother of my kids but i don't want to fuck her and women are like, he's not seeing me anymore. I don't feel safe. I don't feel loved. I don't feel the commitment. So they go and have emotional affairs. This goes back to the freedom and the commitment. Correct. Victoria, let me bring you in on this. Big fan, lovely girl. As you're hearing, listening to this, A, when you go out on a, on a first date with a guy, are you already thinking, all right, can I see myself marrying this guy? All right. And B, what pushback do you have on our friend Janelle here? You're like, well, I don't <laughs> yeah. know about that part, Janelle. <laughs> go ahead. Hmm. Well, I mean, when I do meet a guy, I do think about like, oh, is this could this be like a potential like husband? Because I'm not going to continue pursuing a person if it's not like it's a waste of time for me. Honestly, I agree with what she's saying because like I'm not looking for freedom, and I know a guy is. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I'm looking for that commitment, that security. Like I assess and analyze. Like I feel like in my head, I'm like having all these like buttons and numbers crunching and while i'm like on a date yeah literally so while you're on a date you're already like busting out an excel spreadsheet all right this guy 
Yeah, clearly you're not freaking out on a fucking computer. All right, so. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> she could. But you're saying even in your head, I'm trying to understand the, the mindset of a woman. Though. But we have a lot of men me. watching this, okay? Mm-hmm. And they're like, all right, gorgeous girls are just giving me some game. Guys, listen up. You're sitting there on a date and the guy's talking. He's still like, yeah, you know, I do this, I do that. And you're already Excel spreadsheeting. All right, this guy's six foot two. He's got probably this going on. I'm on it or all right, he's clearly got some mommy issues. Boom, boom, boom. You're like, you're yeah. doing all this in your head. I, I mean, I ask the right questions to find That's out. Okay, good. mom, Ooh. mommy issues, daddy issues. So you have a, you have a list of questions like uh, that are mm-hmm. good to. It, it flows with the conversation, yeah. but like you have to pinpoint those questions. What like, are like the main three yeah. questions you want to ask a guy on a date? <sighs> like, well, what, what are defining you, questions for you? Like, what do you do for work? What do you do for fun? And then like, tell me about your family. Oh, those are okay. good. Can I can I take mine a little deeper? Those are great, and I love that um, you're already spreadsheeting everything. Yeah, good good girl. Um, so, I will. I think those are great questions and amazing. And obviously, you need to know these things. But for me, and this is real game here, y'all. You, this is the most important question you can ask a man and a man to ask a woman. Mm. You have to understand what a person, what makes a person get up every morning and what keeps them up at night. So what you do is you simply ask them, and I ask every person that I date, that I'm in a business relationship with, that I'm in an intimate relationship with, because intimacy is not the same as sex, by the way, even though people confuse it all the time. I ask them, and I'm gonna ask you, Mm -hmm. what are your top three values that you live by? Me? Yeah. Holy shit. So for instance, you know, for me, mine is number one is intimacy. Mm -hmm. I'm an intimacy coach. I value intimacy over money. Like I, I obviously I like money. (laughs) It's useful. I have a son, Mm -hmm. but intimacy is my number one. My number two is um, my health. I'm obsessed with biohacking. Look at me. (laughs) And number three is, um, it is freedom actually, Mm -hmm. but I have a little crazy story. So freedom, meaning I never want to work for someone. Gotcha. And I also want to be able to make my own money so I can take care of my son because it's not the person that I'm going to marry. It's not their responsibility to take care of him. Okay. Yeah. So what are your top three values? Tell us. Uh, well, I said the same. I've said this before. I'll say mm-hmm. it again. I, I do um, an affirmation every morning. Okay. And I say what I'm thankful for to say what I'm Good. grateful for. And I state like where I'm at. Okay. And I always say, you know, and then I'll go deeper. But I, I, I always say that the big, the biggest three things in life are health, wealth and happiness okay. so without health you have nothing Correct. okay and i've been in a situation where um i was dating a girl gorgeous girl model cancer leukemia oh. like boom like for, for, i don't care i've made us so much money that year i'd give it all to just you know make sure she was healthy so i i very quickly realized all right wealth is great but, but without health you've got nothing okay right. so Everyone listening understands, like, without being able to wake up every day, like, what, what's the point? Yeah, so I'm very appreciative of my health. Now, I've been partying in Colombia for the last couple of days, and <laughs> oh, yeah. I just got back, so my health is, like, <laughs> was at maybe, like, a nine, now it's at, like, a six, but I got to get back, okay? But life's good. So I'm very appreciative of health. Yes. And Victoria knows about this <sighs> as much as anyone, because she's dealt with some health yes. issues, okay? Wealth, all right? Mm-hmm. It's very important, especially as a guy, That's right. to earn and produce Correct. and you know be a man of value and contribute um not be fucking broke okay because um like we like chris rock said you know only women children and dogs to be loved in- unconditionally men got to bring something to the table that's right and i've said this before when i was 26 and i was a broke boy and party boy in south beach jack of all trades uh, i was having fun but i was not there was doing, no like meaning there was, i mean i was just I, I didn't have money so like I was crashing on friends' couches, but when you're in your early 20s, that's fine for young men out there. But by the time you're 30, it's like that's you not a good a look, job. okay? Mm-hmm. So by the time I was 35, I became a millionaire. And I was like, oh, I get it now. Status and money and wealth is kind of important for a guy, boom. And then uh, the third thing for me is happiness. Now I'm not a like, I wanna be happy. No, happiness to me is having meaning and purpose yeah. to your life That's okay right. so one of the things that i struggled with um working in finance is that it is what i do it wasn't who i am mm. okay so what your job is doesn't define you and that was mm. that was a that was a challenge that i was having where i was like yeah i do this I, i'm very good at it i work for this fund it's cool but that's like that ain't me like when i when i 
and, you know, check out. All right, it's 8 o'clock. All right, I'm going home. I don't stay in my goddamn suit all day. <laughs> I go put on the clothes that I, that's Adam, right? Yeah. Sweatpants, T-shirt. I'm good, right? So for me, understanding that those things are very important, I'm constantly, constantly rating myself 1 through 10. What's my health right now? All right, I worked. All right, I could work out a little bit more, but I, I'm in good shape. All right, boom, I'm a 9. All right, boom, 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 boom. All right, wealth. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Great. But... There's, there's, more. There's, there's, there's always more another levels, level. 100%. And I learned that working with PBD, Patrick, who's the CEO, mm-hmm. and I, I was getting very comfortable, and I start working with this guy, and I'm like, this guy's worth all 10x what I'm yes. worth, and he's working harder than me. Step it up, Adam. That's okay? Right. And then happiness, um, I actually was, uh, I went and did, I do a lot of man-on-the-street interviews. My buddy puts on an event called the International Day of Happiness, mm-hmm. and they basically were talking about essentially like, scientifically what leads to happiness right and it's not material things it's actually giving back and helping people contribution contribution and having a life of meaning and fulfillment so for me that's very big is understanding those three basic things so that's that's the reason i wake up every morning and what keeps me up at night is thinking all right how can i can fulfill this meaning and purpose but if you're with someone and so bringing it back to relationships if you're with someone that has a totally different like conflicting top three values, the mm-hmm. relationship's not going to last. Mm. Um, now, sometimes they can complement each other. Like you don't have to be the same person. But say if, you know, your partner's um, top three values were um, she really didn't care about like finances. She just wanted to be able to, you know, live basic life and just. No, that's meet. not the case. That's no the, meaning like I've not like meaning they do care about finances. They want you paying for their purses oh, and correct, their clothes correct. and buying them a car, all that. That's most ladies That's here. most ladies, at least in the yes. U.S. for sure. But if she had a conflicting like value set, yours are a little yeah. more like, um, like say if you were adventure mm-hmm. and then hers was safety. It's like. Wow. Well, that might be hard because you want to go travel and explore and jump out of airplanes and she wants to stay in her pajamas and Netflix, you know, things like that. It can make the relationship. Yeah. Challenging. Okay, Victoria, top three values for you. I would say three H's for me. Health, happiness and home. So Mm -hmm. health, obviously, super Mm -hmm. important. Obviously, sitting in a hospital bed for months and going in and out of radiation treatment. Health is a priority. That used to not be a priority. It just changed with my life. And then happiness, of course, like you just want to wake up in the morning, like fulfilled Um, after going through like that near death experience and experience and death of my mom. I really like looked at my life and like analyzed it. And and am, am I truly happy? So every day I make sure I'm doing something that is fulfilling for me and for my life. And when I like when it's my time to go, um, I can successfully say like I'm happy like truly happy like heart filled full of joy and then home I like say home because I it's like my family and my friends who are like my family like Mm -hmm. that's my home that's my base like those are my people and those people or contribute to my happiness as well but I value them like over anything so like my my family that's left in this world and my friends who are like part of my inner circle like I would do anything for them. So yeah. that that's like my top three if someone And asks. when you say home, like, are you eager to build your own home? Like going back to the freedom versus commitment, is there like a yearning, like I want to build a home, I want to build a family, and this is sort of like- Well, what? I just bought a house, so. Okay. Good yeah, I'm yeah. closing yeah. the dinner. Thanks for the fucking yeah. 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 like, house. Like, I'm building <laughs> a house. Yeah, no, I mean, I just bought a house and, you know, making that a home and just going to a place that, like with, When I say like home, obviously family, friends, but going back to a place where I just feel secure and Mm -hmm. safe and I can just relax and be myself. Yeah. Yeah. Safety. I need to get a gun too. I'm thinking about that. There you go. (laughs) Me too. All right. Eric, gun guy. Um, Nat, go ahead. Uh, My top three, uh, it's kind of similar. Uh, I would say family is a big one for me. Um, Then it would be health. That's another one that became a top priority as I've gotten older and my family's gotten older. And then uh, my last one actually is going to have to be uh, peace. Mm. Um, Peace, I feel like, will bring happiness. I think a lot of the time when you're like, life can hit you so many ways, you know, like coming to your internal peace and like being happy with yourself. Like, I think 
peace has happiness and other things included. So I think those are like the three main things that like I value a lot. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, we got a video right here. Yes. We're going to get into this concept of modern feminism. You've talked about it. Um, and we addressed this on the show a lot. This was something I was actually not to, you know, I said that money doesn't live in a vacuum, right? But for me, it kind of did. Like the, a lot of the content that I do now here on VT Money and on Valuetainment is a lot more like it, I see the comments. It's like Adam's getting red pilled, bro. Mm -hmm. And there goes Adam, another red pill thing. But I think it's one of those things that because I grew up in the in the party scene and the party culture in South Beach, I understood very early the difference between a man and a woman. Like for instance, if I go to a club, and it was me and my three boys, like we weren't getting it unless we were buying a table. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I showed up with three girls, oh, right this way. I'm like, out. oh, that's right. Women are commodities. I just show up mm -hmm. with them. And I get free shit, and I don't have to pay money. But if I roll with my boys, mm -mm. I got to come out of pocket. Out of All right, point. let me start rolling with chicks more, a little mm -hmm. bit more often. All right, boom, 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 boom. And then as I started, that was when I was young. I learned that when I was like 18, 19, 20, like you. young guy. Learned it young. And then I got into the nightlife business, and my job was just recruit women, recruit women. Hey, boom, boom, boom. And I would roll around and party for free in South Beach just because I had women that I would take out. And if you're a woman... It's one of the things I always say is like the difference between Miami and L.A. is that in L.A. because people, guys, especially guys that have money, they're very worried that women are like, all right, what's what's on yeah, their yeah. agenda? It's very, you know, like, I don't know what's up, what trick do they have up their sleeve? I said, listen, because I have friends in L.A. Um, and women in New York, for the most part, kind of got to work a little bit more than, right. than than women down here or women in, in LA. L.A. So and I get that there's a whole entire area in the country called the Midwest. A lot of good girls there, even That's in North Carolina, yeah. South, but I'm talking major cities that I spent time in. But here's my point. In L.A., there's always a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. What can I do to get, get a job? Get on this you know, show. Get on this show. Who's get, do I need a, in order to get the job? Whatever. There's always something there. Correct. But I say in South Beach, there's not, there's not that industry doesn't exist. If they're down here, they just want to party for free. Their agenda is how can I just go out and have the best time of my fucking life and free. spend zero dollars mm -hmm. and maybe even make some money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how women operate down here. Correct. So me knowing that, all right, cool. This is how things operate. This is how, you know, commodities work. This, you know, kind of, kind of point is I've kind of been getting red pilled for time after time. But in finance, I was focusing on money, on money, on money, on money. And then with people like um, Ali and Rebecca and other people we've had at the show, I'm like, oh, this and Rolo and, mm -hmm. and Andrew Tate. And we've done, I've done interviews with all these guys. This concept of getting red pilled and being a housewife and feminism has become very, very crystallized in my head. I'm like, oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Mm -hmm. So for someone that talks about money, and now I start having these interviews with these types of people, I'm like, got it, boom, 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 feminism, not good, all right, good, but all right, got it, bang. So the point is, I'm teeing up your video, all right? <laughs> this this so, one got a lot of hate on Instagram and TikTok and went crazy. Ooh. Well, that's how you know you're doing something mm -hmm. right. <laughs> oh, yeah. But a lot of people hate it. All right, let's make sure that we have the audio up. And this is why modern feminism creates beta men. Is that what this video is? Mm -hmm. All right, let's play that. Oops, the volume, volume, gentlemen. You got a top. No, 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 the top, the top corner. We're going to have to probably hit refresh. Yeah. Yeah, there. There you go. And no, I'll just play. top right. Modern feminism doesn't want women to fully surrender or submit to a worthy man, a.k.a. Shiva, because if she does this, then it forces men to step into his role as an alpha masculine man and actually do something society has discouraged him from doing. That's called taking the lead, which forces the woman to follow his will and lead and goes against simping culture, which is the backbone of our economy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Okay. Modern let, me, let, me, let, let me ask some questions here. There's so much to There's so much to discuss here, okay? Um, a, there's the statement that men lead, women follow. Correct. Okay, so we'll get your ladies' uh, opinions on this quote in itself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many of you ladies are going to do what... Um, <laughs> Janelle was doing no. to I'm their man. Like We're gonna one. take a hard pass. We're gonna take a hard pass. pass. Okay, so let's different. start with that, Victoria. <laughs> uh, Janelle, I, I don't know if this was like an actual thing that you do in real life to your man, or yeah. if this is. Like, it is. It is something I do in real life um, to my man. Is something I encourage. Um, we do at our retreats. So you if encourage you, what women to, to, to sort do of to, to men, whether they're their partners or not. If you attend my retreat, you're going to be doing that for sure. To your man. 
to to their man or to a man that they're doing the exercise with. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of women are like, hell no, Janelle. Correct. And this ain't happening. Just if they see it like that. Now, if they attend a retreat and they understand like the spiritual component and the polarity component behind it, they understand and it, it makes sense. Okay. Victoria, <laughs> what are the chances? Eric, we can remove the, like, we, yeah, we, we, we do. don't need all that. Um, what are the chances that you're going to do uh, that, the bowing, the, essentially the kissing of the feet to your man? Negative a thousand? Like, no. Not going to happen. I'm not going to happen. Okay. Explain I'd rather why. make a sandwich that I'm horrible <laughs> at making before so I So you'll that. make a sandwich? Yeah. It's good. Okay. That's a good start. That's a good start, yeah. Um, but that's just something I'm you're not, not going to do. Why? It's just on, like, the thought of that is just so not appropriate to you. It's just, I'm not your slave. Like, what's going through your mind? I don't know. I'm creeped out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Listen, guys, we're having we're having an open discussion here. Yeah. You're all lovely people. That's actually people. a we're nice all... answer. Some okay. of those You're a little later. creeped out, Natalia. Um, I know that ain't that kind yeah, of your vibe. Yeah, right I there. personally Go would ahead. not. I would, you know, make him feel that way in other ways. But I just personally don't feel like. Like for me, I bow when I pray to God. Okay. okay. So mm-hmm. like I don't like I was raised like God. You know, your husband, your, you know, your kids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I don't feel like I would want to bow well, to my husband. Well, he is God. So that's the concept. That, the concept and I was raised that, that your way. man is God. Correct. I was mm-hmm. raised that I was raised in, mm-hmm. in a cult, a very uh, fundamental Christian. So I understand this concept. And well. where? What, what area? Um, actually, I grew up in Thailand. I, my, okay. my family was missionaries. You see the Thai tattoos. Got yes. Um, and this, is, this one is actually um, Sanskrit. It ah. says Ishvara Pranayana. It means surrender to the divine. And the divine is who? God. Okay. God. But you're God, saying, but, but also God, my partner. Now, uh, do you believe that God was a man? Is a man? I believe that God is the divine feminine energy in masculine and feminine energy. I'm God as well. Huh? Okay, you blew my mind. Yeah, I, no I didn't catch means. that. Okay, catch so that. when I talked about polarity, yes. meaning masculine, feminine energy, male and female. So Shiva, as we say, which is the divine, masculine, cosmic principle. Mm-hmm. Like, which you have across your neck, by the way, if right, I'm reading Shiva, that correctly. Right, Shiva, correct. Shiva, correct. Yes. And then the feminine version of that is the divine, uh, feminine, cosmic principle, Shakti. So it's masculine and feminine um, duality, polarity comes together. And that makes oneness, union. And that's the ultimate, when you think about orgasm, that's the ultimate union. It's when there's no more masculine, from a, if you're into metaphysics, if you understand like science no, or spiritual not, science. Not even a little bit. <laughs> so the <Yeah>. metaphysical <laughs> principle is the minute you go into orgasm, you have transcended polarity, meaning you've heard of the chakras, right? This of course. Is, yeah, you've transcended all of them. Because now you're no longer gender. You're no longer male or female. You've gone above that to consciousness. If I ask you, you have the best orgasm of, of your life. Just go there with me now. Like you're there. <laughs> hold on. Hold, oh, on. Hold, on. Hold, hold on. Who said that? <laughs> all right. And Close your eyes. <laughs> Boom. All right. <laughs> and I ask you, what's your name? In that moment of orgasm. You Eric. Don't, no, you, I don't, know. <laughs> you don't even know your name. You can't yeah. say your name. True. You don't know. And the yeah. orgasm, the sexual energy, the orgasmic energy is the most powerful energy in the planet just orgasmic anyone, energy meaning that that seed energy there's no it creates life thank you so if you it so gives, what i teach you know you do that with the right woman correct I, I don't i don't need to explain how sex how, works I think we got right? it. how babies are made all right the stork <laughs> is not actually a thing no. tell you. so yeah. i teach people how to master and control that sexual energy for many okay. people it's a spiritual practice it is for me so when i look at him that's god that's shiva it's a divine masculine cosmic principle of god and he looks at me the same way as the feminine version of that so okay. to me to bow to him and it's like i'm bowing to you because i see in you a godlike energy and principle of unchanging unwavering presence so how do you determine like what type of respect you get I if get he that. just determines like i'm god so i'm gonna do what i want well for Okay, that's a great question. So I always say a worthy, notice I said a worthy Shiva, a worthy Mm. man, meaning a man that provides what is it that woman needs. Women need presence. Mm -hmm. Presence is directed, focused, connected, intimate energy towards you. Mm -hmm. When I look like I can look at Adam and I can make him feel like he's God. 
and like there's no one else in the world that I would ever was like I was like, <laughs> yeah, like what's going on? For a second. <laughs> so right. that's the way uh, when a man looks at but a woman know, that I, way. I'm gonna number one. Yeah, I respect the oh, hell out of everything you're saying. Of course, okay? I understand. But I'm also a realist. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's taboo. I've been out. I'm 40 years old. Okay, okay? I've lived in South Beach. I partied, partied hard. my ass off. Okay, not many women are even thinking. Yeah, the way that you're thinking. Correct. So like, there's there's ideology. And then there's practicality, and 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 or if we can have a more and, practical and realistically, version of that. I don't. Okay. Um, so, for instance, I'm thinking right now. There's a girl I've met in the last year who Tell was like, she treated me sort of the way that you're talking about, and I was like, you're annoying as fuck. <laughs> Yo. Okay. <laughs> It's called stage five clinger. I'm like, can you just fucking leave me alone for a second? And literally would cling, like you, you, you know, like the, yeah. uh, your walk that's away. And like, I'm like, but that's I'm different. like security. Like, but my point but is, is that's that desperate energy that's, though. That's okay. not a the lot right of touche. But yeah. I'm just I'm just saying the only only reference point that I have of a girl bowing yeah. is that. Yeah. Yeah. But any other girl I've ever been with, they're not kissing feet. I was engaged to a girl, and, and she would. I mean, that's why she didn't become gonna, my wife. Exactly, but. And, I don't, I don't think that women are going to do that. They're not going to do that. My thing is, I always say, I'm the extreme. Most women... Okay, now, and I'm it, glad you recognize that. Of, okay. of course, but I'm saying the principles. Women don't... Hey, women are like, you need to treat me like a wife before I... I, I like... I behave like a wife. Put the ring on it, and then I'll be a wife. It's like no, 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 no. Correct. Men, we we expect you to be a husband before you have even get in our pants. You have to take us out. You have to provide for us. You have to take us on a good time. You have to do all this stuff before mm-hmm. we let you have access to the ultimate prize for men. So I'm just trying to show. Obviously, it's extreme. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to show that we have to. Women have to cultivate qualities of surrender of vulnerability of being able to be led by a man and to follow him and to serve him when he needs served yeah now women don't do that today but that's why if you flip a coin and toss it your marriage is going to end and 40 percent of first time marriages end so what we're doing is not working and i think 60 percent of second marriages and 70 percent of third marriages correct um but here here, and i want to get the lady's opinion here um what you're talking, you're saying this is, uh, uh, corrections are needed across the board. Women need to treat a man like a god and then he'll behave like one. He'll treat you like a queen. Everyone's like, I'm going to be treated like a queen. But you act like a little bitch. Like you're like, you need to do this. You need to buy me this. You need to only look at me and only fuck me. Women are delusional. Men are going to fuck other women and they need to get over it. Straight up. Straight up. So that's what women need to understand. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette L. Women uh, don't like me because I speak the yes. truth. Okay, so so you put all men in that category. High yeah. value men. Remember the higher the six over six feet make six figures. Six pack meaning fit. I just like the sixes. Mm-hmm. Six inch over six eggplant. Uh, six inch eggplant and then not married. Like those are the those are what women really want. Maybe some of the stuff's a little extreme, but it's just fun to use those analogies, right? But they've done the the polls on it. Big, strong, athletic, money making. The Packing mo- some heat listen, dudes who one, are not married. That's what you're talking their, about. Correct. And we know that oh, 80% smart. of the women are sleeping with 20% of those men. Now, if yeah. you want a beta male and you want a guy to make you feel secure and safe and love you and simp you, simp on you, you can have that. And he probably will be loyal to you, but he'll probably still step out. Maybe not as much, but here and there. Because men just cheat. The set, stats show it. Women cheat emotionally. So if you want that type of men, tall, dark, handsome, we're just abbreviating it here. Mm-hmm. You have to expect that he's going to fuck other bitches. And the more that women can just get and and, and, and understand that, okay, if you want that type of man. Wow. Victoria, I, I when you I'm hear this. I think I'm just going to die alone. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. not it. So, yeah, well, I, I've got to get your... Li- like, would you agree that both these ladies are lovely, They're gorgeous, feminine, and I know they don't like me and right great now, personalities? No, 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 no. This, no, no. this, this is, is honestly, great perspective. You know what? Don't hate She's the player, hate the game. She's speaking the truth. Okay. Like, you know what? I, 99% of men cheat. Like, it, it's so true. Like, even my hot friend, she got... Che- like, the hot... Um, what, wait, who just came out? Adam Levine just cheated on a Victoria's Secret model yeah. with, like, some dumb Instagram hose. Like, yeah. come on. Men cheat. That's like, right. 
I'm sorry. But like, that doesn't mean true. that you ladies are going to need to be okay with it. Though. No. But I don't okay. think she's saying that we need to be okay no. with well, it. Well, but she kind of is. I kinda, I kinda, I'm saying that you don't have to be okay with it. Then go for a lower value yeah. man or a beta or a So sex. I'm going to go for a beta man. And there you go. <laughs> and you'll be perfect. Problem solved. Sorry. You'll, well, you'll be you, married next time well, we see you. Out there. Then, Very then that is the <laughs> eternal question. Would you rather have that boss ass dude, right? Everything we just talked about, the 6666 thing is just athlete cool athletic money maker you know gentleman not cool married, fun not married uh, not, not married okay mm-hmm. um but there's a chance that the higher the value the more he's gonna yeah there's a chance that he exercises cheats. options I think or of, someone that maybe doesn't have all those qualities and he's not you're not that attracted to him as much. much money right doesn't make as much he's maybe not as good looking maybe not as in shape what have you but he's loyal to you, and no he's more feminine, problem. And he'll probably let you lead the relationship. You will lead the relationship. I, I get that these are <laughs> complete, like, you know. Ends of the spectrum, there's always Binary the type questions, and life doesn't work that Can way. Can I at but... least get over six feet, though? <laughs> <laughs> right? What Interesting. Are you she said, I want to wear my heels. And so really? <laughs> so of those three, okay, A, what would you pick? Let's I just mean, go, let's know, just what, address that. Life isn't fair, so you're not going to always get what you want. That's right. So... My mom always is like, you know, date someone who's like 20% less attractive than you and you'll be happy mm-hmm. and secure. Because really? they're going to be more yeah. into her than she is into. Uh, they're going to like. In our it, friend group, that's what we say. Correct. Yeah. But do you even find those guys who are like no, super attractive, even, attractive? Okay, look, I talk about this on my TikTok all the time. Even the medium ugly ones have an alpha male complex. So you can't even. I mean, like I'm them. having to go like 50% <laughs> less attractive. You're like, I'll take 50. So this is something that women discuss is like, oh, oh yeah. So meaning, if you see a guy and he's like a super good looking guy, or you're like, yeah, too much work Stay for me away. to retain that guy. Yeah. Really? He's not going to simp on you. You no. have to understand how many girls are on his dick. Like, he's just not going to do it. Like, if I want a compliment, I'll I'll have to ask and say, hey, how, do, how does this dress look? Or I asked him the other day, I said, can you tell my butt's been getting bigger? And then he looked and he's like, is it just the pants? Or, and I said, no, it's not just the pants. But like, you have to, if you're with an alpha man that's getting all that attention from him, you're not going to get compliments. You have to ask it. You have to be secure. Huh. And a lot of p- women are like, oh, you're insecure. It's like, no, I'm not. If I, I could land a guy my age in Newport Beach, the land of the MILFs, and all the money. <laughs> and, the land of the MILFs. And, and, and be taken care of. My son and I taken care of for life. I, I, told, I told the cab driver how many offers I got just this year for that. But I would not be attracted to him, not no. sexually. And to me, sexual polarity is the most important thing. It's what I preach. Yeah, but I, w- I want to give the guys some game out there because there's a lot of guys out there who see really attractive women mm-hmm. and they get nervous to go approach. But I'm learning something from an attractive woman, Victoria here, <laughs> who's basically saying, listen, I'm not looking for the freaking hottest dude because that yeah. hottest dude is going to probably break my heart. He's not going to freaking, ch- he's going to cheat on me. He's not going to treat me the way I want to be treated. So although I used to go for the hot ones. Okay. I used to but be you like, learned athlete, athlete, only yes. the hot ones. Yes. And then I was just like, am I happy? <laughs> okay. So meaning if a, just a genuine good dude, I'm not saying like, guys, let's not get into the, it's your, either you're an athlete, you make a million dollars or you're a fucking loser. It doesn't like, <laughs> no. no, let's, let's just be clear here. Be real, yeah. But let's say there's a guy out there. He's doing good. He's got a nice job. He's a good dude. He's, you know, he's I in shape. He's, he's fine. I think when he's you, cool. Yeah. He's got a shot. Yeah, I mean, I think when you grow older, your values change. And, yeah. I mean, you it know, takes, everyone's going to get ugly It one takes day. a hot girl to get their heart broken a few times and be like, all right, let me stop trying to bang the NBA player and just find a nice okay, guy. That's I'm a not negative. saying you, <laughs> that <laughs> just like, in yeah, general. You said athlete. I didn't put words in your mouth, Victoria. I know, but seven foot tall is a little too tall for me. I didn't say seven foot. I said athlete. <laughs> but that's NBA. I'm just stereotyping. Okay. Like, <laughs> you said athlete. I didn't. All right. But... Um, by the way, uh, of these things here, six foot, six figures, six pack, six inches. Eggplant. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you could play like, uh, all right, I definitely want that one. That one, uh, okay. That one would be nice. Like rank mm-hmm. those things if you guys okay. could. Let's go down the list here. Uh, I need the list. Do you want me to start? Yeah, I know. yeah you can yeah, start. Six I'll foot, do... six figures, six pack, just in shape. God. And then. Okay, so you know, I'm going to say. I'm not even going to say six. Like yeah, sex yeah, is yeah, good, yeah. essentially. Well, with, for a... me, it's 
it's a tie between the height and the eggplant, but the eggplant is like a close second. It has to be there. So you want a tall guy with good dick game, and then whatever that, he does regarding his money is like, you're like, I'll figure abs, it out. Yeah. Interesting. No, I need the abs next, and then the, the money is last, because I'm always going to make money. Interesting. Yeah. Does that okay, affect, that's not where I thought oh, you would be going with does this. Does that affect how you feel towards your yeah. man? Like, like, no, I'm so crazy. Like, I'm Are you into honest. guys? Like, Would you date somebody who's like, super hot, big eggplant he's broke yeah she just course. said that I just, like that's exactly what, what i'm saying i'm just saying yeah. by I the am, way i don't see a lot of but women you don't think that. that they would have qualities of like a broke-minded person and that wouldn't be attractive to you because you're be. like a money-making woman thank you you know so mm -hmm. those I, qualities of a lazy person like do I you find that attractive lazy. i didn't say lazy i say like for instance um guy in the green room right he's not making six figures well, he's I, young he's Give young. Him some time he will but uh he's he's driven and mm -hmm. he works really hard and he's not lazy you know just by the way when i was 26 i was sleeping on a friend's couch uh by the time that i was uh 36 i had an nba player staying in my extra fucking okay. bedroom on my couch well, so like things can change things in can 10 change. years mm -hmm. so six eight guy in the green room you're gonna be all right, buddy. He's Keep playing good. that pipe. <laughs> and then, playing that is that pipe. him, by the way? It's not. It's okay. that's a long story. But um, that's a long story. <laughs> yes, sure it is. But um, um, Victoria, of these things right here, six foot, six figures, six pack, six inches. Oh my God, What's I'm a like... priority to you, and what do you? What could you do without? Mm, what can I do without? All right, maybe I could do without the six pack. Okay. <laughs> So I mean, look at dad, that, Bob. Dad bods are in, I guess. Dad bods are in. We can work out together. Yeah, Eric, hope for you, brother. I love her. She's adorable, um, right? She's Absolutely darling. adorable. She's oh, like, boy. Uh, probably the eggplant and the money. Yes. Eggplant. Yes. So treat me nice. Lay the pipe. Lay the pipe. Okay, and I can yeah. do it. So you'll go out with a 5'9 guy. She's not as like angel as I thought. She's five, so nine? Five, five, nine. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was, you know what? It's okay. Five, I'm nine? taller than me. Okay. You were shocked. Well, yeah, you're 5'4". No, I'm not 5'4". Five, She's 5'7". Five, 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 okay, my bad. I'm not good. I don't know. You got heels on. I you never know with a girl. Sorry. You are not 5'4". You're 5'7". <laughs> but I'm tall. I'm six foot. So I, you know. Yeah. I'm not 6'7", like the dude in the six, green eight. room. Okay. 6'8". Eight. Eight. My bad, homie in the Do green room. Do you check room. off all the six? Yeah, we're doing all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> good See. question. <laughs> See. Yeah, that's not... A, well... The six pack I could work on, to be honest with you. I, <laughs> he I, just got out of Colombia. Yeah, I was just fairness. in Colombia. Oh, well, shout okay. out to my new kids that are living out. Oh. <laughs> 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 No, I'm just kidding. I was a, I was a church. Kidding, I'm kidding. The whole just time, yeah, I go, people church. go to Colombia to go to church, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. for sure. On Sunday. Oh yeah. Of course. Cool. Anyway, all right. Yeah. Interesting. So Natalia, yes. go ahead. I'm six foot, six figure, six pack, six inches. What could you uh, um, do without? I would say six figures would be important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then um, we'll say we'll say six pack because yeah. it's health. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would think, like, this doesn't have to be, like, a strong six pack. I'm not, like, into, like, really cut guys. But, like, that would be, like, a resemblance of, like, you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the others, what is it, eggplant and height? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've dated some average height uh, guys. And okay. So I would like you ladies to speak for the entire feminine gender, female gender, Mm -hmm. And if you could rank these in order of importance, so there's gentlemen out there really understand what they need to improve upon. Whether they need to make some more money, or they need to go get a penis pump, <laughs> or they need to go get to put some fucking lifts in their shoes, or they need to go hit the gym, because you know you can do things out there. You these can days, take okay? care of all these things, by the exactly. way. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> if you can, let's get some uniformity here. Not okay. your opinion. All right. Of those four things, what's on the bottom? Okay, so height, money. I believe uh, that fitness, right? Or, or you are know. we talking for all the women or just all, the three? Of I us? want you in women in general. Uh, say, women in general. I'm gonna say that height is pretty important for money and height are the yeah. two top for women. I would say from what they've I pulled. agree with that. Do you? What do you agree? Beautiful. I would say money. Yeah. So money's at the top. Yes. Number one. Yeah, yes. Yes. Gentlemen, this is why we do the mm -hmm. show. Yes. Money at the top. Yep. Write that okay, down. Okay. Write that Remember, down. Remember, I'm the exception. Everyone, I'm the weird one. So. Exactly. That's why I said not extreme. your opinions. I want you speaking. For women here, mm -hmm. this is the voice 
of women right here. Yeah, so money number of one. The voice of God. Men, Don't forget. Uh, correct. Men, get your money right. All right. <laughs> number two would be what? Go ahead, so, yeah, ladies. Go ahead. You guys know each other. I know, talk. I know most women say talk say about. Hides. Yeah, they're, they're always like, hides. Oh, I, yeah, I that is one a lot of women like say. I don't. Outlier. She doesn't, okay. but she is an outlier but in this one. I, I do hear but height. height. Is that most important. women are like tall, dark, and handsome. Come okay. on, that's like yeah. the thing. I'll give you guys. Um, so height number, number two. Twos. Interesting. So get some. They, so there's oh, guys. The new shoes they wear. The new shoes that they're making. They all have. But how much can you change that in a guy? You're not going to change too much with that. Maybe grow an inch or two. All right. And that's the problem. I mean, yeah. look, look, look I'm true. six foot. I'm not the tallest guy. I'm not a short guy. No, you're like, you can work out and get abs. Correct. Yeah. There's not like you can do with height. But we're just saying height. that most women do, they do say, oh, is he tall? Like, is he, yeah. you know, that's. Like, I think it's just if they're so taller the than them. Yeah. Um, but I would, say, them. I would say next yeah. would okay. be the health, the abs. Yeah. The health. Because like you said, it's synonymous yeah. with health. Um, so the, okay, health. The gym. Get your, mm-hmm. g- doesn't mean you have to have like. We're just speaking for all of women. You don't have to have the six pack, really. Yeah. You can have like but a fit dad bod. Be, be in shape. Be <laughs> yeah. fit dad you know, bod. Watch what you <laughs> eat. Like it, like you know, it. men's yeah. diseases, that heart attacks, prostate, all this stuff is real and it's from diet, most of it, and stress. Okay. So if you're managing your <laughs> health, I'm a holistic nutritionist as well. If you're yeah. managing your health, you're not going to have the heart attack issues because you're not going to have the stress, huh. stress levels. So gym, yoga, find some kind of. <clears throat> Meditation, spirit, prayer, whatever you believe in, breath work is very good. And then, just to be clear here, all of you guys, if we're getting some uniformity here. The yeah. bottom of your list is the eggplant, the eggplant situation. Well, I'm mm-hmm. I'm speaking. That's a for little ironic. Well, we're I, speaking I know, for all. I know, yeah. I know, I know. Yes, that's a little. It's a little ironic coming from a sex expert, sex no, expert. I'm saying that that's at the top of my list. You asked me to speak yes. for all the women, okay. though. I'm, I'm just okay. stating the obvious here. Yes. So, gentlemen out there, we have three very, very lovely women here who have basically said, A, number one, work on your money. Mm-hmm. Straight up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get some success in your life. Get some wins in your life. Have a career. Get that going. Everything number else one. will grow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, telling okay you. I'm telling you. Number two, <laughs> like, you can't, you, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's your height. It's your like, height. But, but, if you can't, yoga does you, grow your spine a little bit. Stop it! Stop oh, it! It does. <laughs> I'm to a grow one inch. Right? Go, okay. Health. However, however, health. Um, health. You put third. Meaning, Correct. all right. So let's say you're not the tallest guy. Let's say you're five eight. What have you? Go hit the Take fucking gym, yourself. bro. Have some big arms. Yeah. Like Stress yesterday, levels. we had uh, Michael Chandler, UFC mm, yeah. gangster ass guy, super good looking guy, very fit, five eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to talk shit about yeah, that guy. Yeah, that, is, that guy will kick me right in the looking. face. Yeah. He is a good looking dude. Yeah. Meaning, all right, he's not the tallest guy in the world, but man, he's, he is, he is he's built. Alpha. He he's, is jacked. He's you could bi- ignore that if you met him. That's my point. Yeah. Okay, so okay. it's ideal. Mm-hmm. And then, all right, stay in shape. Like, no doubt, the guy's a UFC fighter. I mean, he's fighting next month in like for a, what? Uh, the lightweight the fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. championship or against Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Massive thing. Maybe not championship. However, but interesting enough, the sex... <laughs> Number four is the least important of these qualities. Well, for interesting, again, Victoria is like doing her little Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. In her, like, <laughs> she she that. has her Excel spreadsheet going. It's on your face. You're like, <laughs> we're talking. We're, we're not giving our preferences. Ours is I always. Know that. But we're saying for most women, remember, women don't really care about sex as much huh. as men do. You the know what's average crazy? Woman. Men probably have the exact opposite list here. Correct. Yeah. Eric, this Correct. is where you're going to weigh in. Yay. Eric Tate is in the house. <laughs> okay, so six foot for a, like, do you care for girls five three or five nine? No, I don't care. Really don't care. Nope. Mm-hmm. Okay. She can't be too I mean, short you? or too yeah. tall, though. Okay. Can't, can't be taller than me. Can't be taller than See? you. Okay. Yeah, I've dated a girl taller than me before, and I was constantly, like, when she put heels on, she then was taller. Really and I was yeah. constantly like, give me a kiss. Kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> um, you don't care how much money a girl makes, I do you? I care less. I pay for everything. Okay. 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 That's what we Good. call a yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay. do, By the way, does he have a camera on him? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's fine. No, okay. it's we fine. just want to hear his voice. I, okay, but it's I, guess, like the voice I, I just of God. I don't know. Yeah. If people yeah. Are, like the voice of God. Production crew, you can speak. Does Eric have a camera on him or no? Tequila still never came. Yes, he does. <laughs> By the way, I the love tequila it. never Ladies. came. Okay, so. the tequila never oh, came. What happened? We ran out. We ran out. Uh, I bought yeah. the bottle of tequila. I kept it. I think it was Vinny, man. I don't know. Oh, this guy <laughs> Vinny. Okay, and then we have so money. We don't care. Height. We don't care. Health is how they look. Yeah, fitness, very, very important. Probably yeah. number one, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, number one, how yeah. they look. That's right. They're like 
their body, their vibe. Mm-hmm. And then number two, like the sex kind of, because, you it's know, as important. a man, it's like, you But how do you yes. measure that? The size no, of her boobs, I, her ass, like, no, well, what? Well, no, I, I mean, that's the fitness. How sexually active is she? Like for most, most men are sexually deprived. One out of every mm. three men from the ages of 20, 22 to like early 30s, they're not having correct. sex. One out of three men under 30 have not had sex in the activity. last year. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, correct. That's a stat. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So what we're understanding is that men and women have, to use your word, polarized uh, wants and yeah. needs. Oh, absolutely freaking opposite. Hmm. Absolutely opposite. This is a little contrary to the whole, you know, modern feminism vibe. Well, the and thing is, is, you know, modern feminism is single handedly responsible for destroying the future of our society. <laughs> Sorry. I'm very, I feel fairly strong in that statement because they are trying to castrate men and um, take their balls and put them in their purse. And then allow women to take the lead and to Mm -hmm. be non-binary and all these things. And I have no problem with any uh, uh, people who identify that way. However, in order to have a thriving, functioning society, we need masculine and feminine energy to co-create together, to have offspring together, to raise that family unit. And that is what um, is going to be responsible for future generations in our society functioning, so on and so forth. But modern feminism is coming in and taking that away. Yeah, and I think that's, um, yeah, I'd like to have that conversation because it's kind of alluded to before, whether it's politics, whether it's media, whether it's masculine and, and feminism, there's corrections that are needed and there's overcorrections. Like yeah. we talked about this last time. The 1920s and women's suffrage movement, I think we can all agree, yeah, women should vote. Absolutely. Okay, so like the Absolutely. initial first wave feminism we got no problem with that. Correct. Second wave feminism came in in like the Mad Men era in the 50s, 60s. Yeah, women can work. Correct. They should, if they want to work. In this day and age, we need, yeah. we need two incomes of sometimes. Course. Or sometimes, yes. or it's like, I'm not going to tell you you need to stay in the kitchen. It's no. your choice. And women but can work from home even now. You do so whatever you do want. Do whatever you want, yeah. But third wave feminism is where they basically said, you don't need a man. You, you can do man. it yourself. They you know? tell you to go home and put a plastic dildo that vibrates 360 degrees inside and does 50,000 pulses per second. Then they get mad at men and say, why can't you make me come? <laughs> well, that sounds dangerous. Well, bitch, why would you, why would you, if you're putting something like that inside of you on a regular basis, no man on the planet can compete with that. Yeah. And then, and then you can't even make yourself orgasm because 70 some percent of women only orgasm through clitoral stimulation. They do not have vaginal orgasms. That means G spot and deeper walls are G spot and up. And 30 some percent of women don't orgasm at all. Like Hmm. never. So yes, she's been faking it. So, but all of this again is cha-ching it's money. You know, the prawn industry, um, the, the sexual prawn is the toys. It's all in that industry. It's it's sim culture. It's not helping families. It's not helping the family dynamic. Hmm. It's destroying the polarity between masculine and feminine energy. Think about it. Think about. I know all of y'all have watched porn, so don't lie and say you have it. But think about the the money shot that everyone fast forwards to. Just go there in your mind for a moment with me. That shot <laughs> is the shot of what balls and penis. Really think about it. You see the you see the what we call the yoni in Sanskrit the the womb, but what you're really seeing is balls and penis moving in and out. Oh, the there, money shot! I thought was, mo- I, I no. went someplace else. On the money <laughs> shot. No, like the money shot. Oh, like the money I was, shot. I went someplace else. The precursor to the next one. Yes, but what I'm the saying other is, one. they're doing that, and that yeah, is money shot. We have a different opinion on money shot. That's usually like around this uh, area. Yes, the okay. s- sorry, second money shot. <laughs> but what they're doing is that they're they're focusing on that because. A lot of men tend to watch that mm-hmm. and then it starts homosexualizing them. They start becoming like, like what I'm saying Hold is. Hold on, what, what do you mean? It starts like, homosexualizing okay, them? When you're, when you're focused on balls and eggplant mm-hmm. for most, that's, they're not showing like, they don't go and show all the women. Like there's the, the main focus shots are on that. It's a subconscious trying to make men more homosexual no no i, I mean be- i don't know if that's i believe that because if that's the uh, that's if that's the money shot you're referring to i'm fast forwarding right there to the no. actual money shot. But have you actually <laughs> ever thought about that though why they why they zoom in so much on that area? can you actually make men more homosexual listen we have this have conversation you heard all about the time the down low men 
The, what the, is it called? The, down, the down low men. You know about this. About most Matt? of the African American men who actually have functioning normal lives, have wifey, have children, are prominent members of society, and then they are sleeping with men under, like, not telling anyone. Like, keep it on the DL and the yeah, down low? Yeah, the DL, yeah. So ask me again if I heard about that. Have you heard of no, that? No, I have not heard anything about that. No. They show that in TV shows a lot. What? It, like, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real thing. I just, I have such a hard time understanding this. Because we were having this conversation earlier. We'll talk about that, about <laughs> Tom Brady, whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't know, guy. I mean, I, I like, I played football in high school. I played football in college. I've always been on a sports team. I hang with dudes. I, I roll with, like, I, I'm a dude, right? Correct. I don't know any of my homies. Well, that are like, yeah, them. no, 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 no. I know. Okay. They're not. They're not going to admit it, though. That's what. I'm, no. And that's I, right, I, there is an underground guys, network because I have, some, I have some. I have some guy friends Go. who like guys, and they have told me some prominent figures in Charleston, South Carolina, that's correct. sleeping it's with guys on the, the down low, it's and they're very, like, oh. hey. You know, you better not tell anyone. Like, I've had a guy friend who was hooked up with prominent Thank figures, you. like on the download. Thank really? you so much for coming yeah. for me. Too. No, I mean, I've, I've, I've heard of it. Okay, I, I have one more question. It's conditioned. These though, are Rob. guys who have been very straight, masculine, yeah, and straight, straight dudes. They have not gone down that path at all. They didn't have like that weird thing in college, like no. nothing. Mm -hmm. This is they're just dudes, in and Hollywood. all of a sudden they're like, you know. I think it's time to suck some dick. <laughs> it, and it what? Has, it's conditioned love, and that's what I'm saying. The the prawn and stuff. And you think that's being conditioned it's per, by it's society? It's somehow Cor correct. Because I have such a hard time grasping this. Look at it's big in Hollywood. There's I know well, for Hollywood a fact, is not America though. Well, it's not the world. It's that's true. But fabricated she's, society. She's Hollywood. talking about you know the southern, and the, it is big in the south, especially in yeah. Atlanta. It's huge down there. Really? Yes. Guys, what are you doing? I mean, do what you want to do. I just I don't. Yeah, but it's a my, double my, life for me. But. Okay, that's that's the biggest problem that yeah. I have. If you want to be gay, go be gay. Yeah. I'm not, this isn't like gay bashing at all. But I have gay the friends. the South, it's different. Go be so. gay. But th this whole like, yeah, I've been straight my whole life. And, well, you know, just now it's sucking dick time. You know, like I, I, I just, I don't get it. <laughs> it goes against, well, again, they're, they're trying to undermine the society. It's all about making money. Okay, but that's, but we're saying two different things here. You're, I'm saying just from a man, like I'm, I'm a person, I make my own decisions. You're saying that they've watched a little too much Real Housewives and they're just like, you know what? <laughs> Not real. Yeah, I just, you know, I just, I, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is doing it. Now it sounds so sexy. It's, it's being conditioned what? from every walk of life. P porn is the most, like, obvious thing. But even with, like, look at TikTok. Go on TikTok and watch couples today. It makes me cringe. Most of these women are parading their men around like they're an idiot. They make them do all kinds of, like, silly stuff. And the women are, like, putting them in situations where, they don't look like a Shiva. They don't look like a god. They look like a simp. And so it's like being it's being put in culture that women mm. are in control of the house. That we run the world. Thank you, Beyonce. We do all this stuff. <laughs> and, and I'm serious. They're Who perpetuating. Run the world? Yeah. Girls. Who run the Correct. That whole thing. We're Yikes. perpetuating. And I'm not saying women shouldn't be independent. They shouldn't feel confident. They should blah blah blah. But that's not what's happening. We wow. are switching gender roles. Like literally. And this is not conducive for a healthy, functioning, passionate, intimate, orgasmic relationship or just for the future of our children. Okay. You want to weigh in? You want to say something? I kind of, I mean, I, I agree. I think uh, society, mm -hmm. I think TV shows, uh, it's being pushed that, you know, women are supposed to act like men. Men are supposed to act like women. That's right. right. Now, I don't think that's making adults into gay men. I think it's easier to turn kids and then they're confused and then they grow up like that. Now right. that I agree yes. with. Correct. I agree with. That okay. I agree with. But the politicians, they were straight their whole life and then they decided to be gay. Well, were they really I'm, straight their whole life? That's correct. The, then, right. they that's the then they weren't. Then they weren't. Right. So they were I, I agree with yeah. that. That, that. That's way. essentially what's making right. them. Maybe right. they're not gay. Correct. Maybe they're just you're, curious. You're a, you're, a, you're a 46 year old guy and right. you've just been straight your whole life. And you know what? Well, I, I have, watch a little too I much. I think there is an over sexualization in this culture that. So there's some men who just want to fuck anything. That's good. So she's right. I have clients. I'm, I'm just saying. I okay. have clients that come to really? me and say, I'm curious I that I want to, you know, I want to explore men and I, I'm straight. I have a wife. I have children. And they're, these are prominent, like you yeah. said, prominent members of society with money and all the assets and everything. And they're like, yeah, I just, you know, I, I've experienced with men, but I'm not gay. And I'm like, well, okay. I mean, that happens of, on the opposite okay. end, too, because like women are like, I'm fed up with the men and they go gay. I've so, seen like, this before. Though. I've 100 percent seen this I before. I mean, I, we've seen that in our, like 
in high school, you're encouraging yeah. girls to kiss. Next thing it's you know, different. you're in college and you're in, you know, like that, I've sounds. seen that, like the whole, the three something. Totally with you, been there, done that, you know, the chicks thing. Ding. The guy thing, I just don't it's, understand. Again, when they've lived this way their whole life and then they just make that switch. For instance, if you told me that you had clients that are coming to you like, listen, I've been with my wife for 10 years. I really want to bang another chick. I've got zero follow-up that questions. Happens too. I get it. Yeah. Makes complete sense. Check, check, check. <laughs> check. So I like I get that. But it's the whole yeah, I, I've been playing for the uh for uh you know team A for uh my whole career. Now it's time for team B. It's a control thing. It's like if you're familiar to this is one aspect of it. If you know the BDSM culture in that world, people think it's oh the fifty shades of gray and that was like romanticized. Mm -hmm. But the real BDSM culture is like it's a psychological mind fuck. And what does BDM, yeah. BDSM stand for again? It's um, bondage, sadism, masochism. Am I getting BDS? Uh, dominance. Dom dominance. Yeah, dominance. bondage, dominance, sadism, what about masochism. The <laughs> so, yeah, um, what about the D? What about the D? Don't forget, we skipped that one. <laughs> <laughs> can't skip the D. Thank you. Forget about that D. Thank you. <laughs> So what it is is for bondage, men, dominance, sadomasochism. Correct. Got it. So what it is? I, for, I gotta tell you, I'm such to... a goddamn meat and potatoes guy. You are. Give me a hot chick. Throw missionary. in the back. No, I don't mean it like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw you all around okay, that thing. Okay, good. Let's but make it one fun, chick, Rob. hot in the bed. I don't need to be bondage. I don't yeah. need fucking gag. I don't need fucking <laughs> any more D. Are you sure? No. Like, I'm, I'm good. A, I'm a little sure? old school too. It's a little too much. Yeah, for me. old school. All right, but this is why we're learning here. So for a lot of guys. But serious question. Yeah. What about the D? What about the D? I'm going to tell you. So what happens is so with BDSM, these guys, yeah. why they get into this and why they sort of, oh, maybe a guy. They are in these power positions where they, like some of my clients, um, I have billionaire clients and mentors. Not million, billion. I can call them up and right now. By the way, um, Tony Robbins' um, PR team, they want to talk to you. So they're interested in like representing oh, Nice. You. Sure. So I'll, can we? Sure. Can I hey, get, Tony Robbins. Sure. Can, Hit can me I, up, buddy. What? Can I get your cell number? Yeah. This? Okay. I'll By the way, even you. if you're lying, I'll yeah, give you my cell number. Yeah, I was going to say, is <laughs> it? Really? You don't have to use that smooth <laughs> line to get my cell number. No, but it's. True. Anyway, back so to the we'll D. Talk. So what happens is these men are in such powerful positions. They've made all the decisions. They, for Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and after a while, they want someone just to tell. It's weird. I've heard this story. I'm telling you. This it's, pig pay thing. It's so. This pig, pig pay. pay. Yes. I don't judge any of my clients but it's just okay they want I have someone this to tell before. them to do i have a good friend uh she's an only fans girl mm -hmm. okay mm. and she was telling me about this this pig pay thing i said and and i ha i have an easier time understanding this than you know i've than a dude that's been banging chicks his whole life and all of a sudden he wants to go get banged by a guy that to me is like well, all right cool i just don't get it but this i get mm -hmm. you're a ceo you're running around. You're telling people what to do all day long. Oh. It's just something you've been doing for a decade or two. And behind closed doors, you want some chick to just tell you you ain't shit. And get on the dominated. floor. Lick my boot. Yeah. Like, I Peed get on I, all that stuff. All right. That's a little aggressive. Sorry. However, no, I, I mean, this <laughs> is what saying, happens. Yeah. But I've heard these stories before. And this, my friend, the OnlyFans girl, told me this. I was like, really? She goes, oh, and they pay. They pay. They pay to get dominated basically i was like "Ooh, okay all right i'm not cutting that check and sometimes it does though. involve men too that's the only other thing i know you have a hard time understanding no, it's, <laughs> but then i get it I, they, I speak english i just i, I it's i know it's and yeah. it's it's and, and you look at these men they have their names on libraries and this and that and all the money and ass and it's just something in their wow. brain has said like i'm bored like you know like this is a true stu study all the astronauts mm. tony robbins actually did this i've attended all his events but the astronauts, when they came back down from space, mm -hmm. all of them, but I believe one, check this to be certain, um, got addicted to um, drinking and alcohol. They get, they became depressed. Mm. Why? Do you, do you want to Because you're living in goddamn space. What the hell well, on earth is what, there that's going to excite you? There's nothing. Exactly. And as, as yeah. humans, that we, we have a need to always be growing. If we're not growing, we're dying. The law of entropy, the law of atrophy, that really is big in relationships, right? I can appreciate so that. So there's nothing for them to do after this point. And then they're I just like, it. what What are we've accomplished? What are you going to yeah, do you just to went, be You space? just went to the moon and now it's like, what's you want next? me to go like, Mars? watch TV or what now? Are you yeah. Do? yeah, like what's next? I so, get that. So that's what happens. That's really what so happens. That's what, so you're using the metaphor of you made all the money, you got all the billions, you've done it all, you have the yacht. Can I just get a check to pee on me once in a while? That's right. Is that really what it is? That's correct. Or can I get a guy? Can I get a guy to you know what? To to 
to, you know, put their eggplant inside of me. Wow, what a weird thing. I don't want to make any more money. I'm good. Yikes. <laughs> Stop now. <laughs> I don't want to get too rich. I don't want to get bored like that. Figure that out okay, today, Victoria, Adam. you're such a sweet girl. And <laughs> I'd like thing. to get your opinion on what, what you're hearing here. Like, have you ever run into these situations where these, like, super masculine men, like, well, you kind of alluded to it in South Carolina. What's your take on this? You've seen masculine men kind of <laughs> on the down low. Would you call it the down low? Mm-hmm. Down low yeah, men? Yeah, sorry. You've like, experienced this? Well, I mean, I'm haven't personally i've just yeah. heard stories mm-hmm. first-hand accounts what have you heard what have you heard mouth don't, witnesses i don't know what you want to call them don't, <laughs> don't say call. names don't want okay. no names yeah you know friends friends of friends but yeah. let, reveal a story that you heard about these it's just a guy men. i thought was like very masculine he had actually taken me on a couple dates and then um Shucked my you. friend who shoots for the other team uh he told me yeah i just went on a date with him like sucked him off and I was like, what? Are you sure? Like, yeah. And there was proof. And yeah. She saw the pictures. And I was just confused for a little bit. And then someone was like, yeah, it's like his thing. Secret thing. Hmm. Yep. This is, it's wow. a real thing. Not? Yeah. I'm not shocked by it, but um, I know it's out there. I think, I think, I think today, especially it's more common. Like when, like, oh these celebrities are coming out or like there's these whispers around that they do like other guys um i i mean i'm not surprised like think about it like maybe you're in hollywood and you have essentially like everything like where do you you know like the astronaut like what more could fulfill them or maybe they want like something exciting something adrenaline rush like secret behind doors like that could be what really turns them on like it could be a lot of different factors i think it's just a matter of like kind of like them figuring it out but um i'm not shocked by it i guess you could say but not i'm not into that you're not in that. Are you, are, do we have super chats are you managing that um, looking at? yeah i'm looking at some chats okay, are you ready to, you want to do that now or you want to um, wait a second uh we can wait a second we okay can wait, wait a second get that let's going. get a few more chats get, i didn't even get guys, a chance to say guys make yeah sure i've been like, so locked in yes, to this conversation with combo. janelle victoria and natalia that i haven't I, i've kind of almost forgot about super chats comments yes. we see you guys out there we appreciate it yes. we love you we do the show for you like i said before sometimes you do more finance finance stuff sometimes you do more romance stuff um Today, it's a lot of weird romance going yes. on, but we're learning. Intense. But I think my ultimate thing is like, I think at the end of the day, just be comfortable with who you are. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the like meaning, like, if you're gay, just be gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I think I don't celebrities understand. don't have that luxury to just be gay without being commented Scrutinized. on. Yeah. yeah, they don't. I'm not even talking about celebrities. Like the guy she's talking about. The, uh, but there, the there comes scrutiny with everything. So, so I, don't, uh. I never want to be like, come out if you never want to come out. Like, uh. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. Okay, so there's here's my question. On. There's is power that, to the secret. Is that yeah. guy actually gay? I, is that what you think? I think he's sexually fluid. <laughs> I think he's gay. I think he's gay. He's gay I, I love. Right? I love I think that he's she's gay. gorgeous, but there's there's white or black, and this is why people don't. Okay, then that's thank okay. You. People don't like this because I if they say, can, uh, can we come to your retreat? Where this this? I said yes. Anyone can come. A treat. I don't care who comes as long as you pick a gender, an energy, not a gender. I say you pick a masculine or feminine energy. You decide. It could be two women, could be two transgenders, could be two men, three men. I don't care. One of you is more masculine in the relationship and one of you is more feminine. And I don't have to, I mean, I can tell by looking at them, but they will tell you inna- innately. They're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm more the more feminine because everything in nature responds to the law of polarity. Uh-huh. Day, night, hot, cold, right? Yin, yang. Like it's it's everything. There's positive and negative. I love this. This is what I'm talking about, baby. I want to go deeper on this. Let's go deeper. That's what she said. We're going deeper. That's also what she said. This goes back to the theme of this episode: is this polarity thing, and this is the problem that you have with modern day feminism: is that it's making men more feminine and making women more masculine, and it's it's not natural. This lack of polarity. It's kind of like you're they're the same. So at your retreats, you basically say, listen, one of you is going to be the masculine energy and one of you is going to be the more feminine energy. Correct. And I don't care who you're at, but that's how it works. That's right. But back to her situation is you actually think that this guy who's been pretending to be alpha is really gay. But he can be gay. I think he projects more masculine energy if we're going to talk the energies. Okay. Okay. So how do you grapple with that? I guess is my question. I mean, 
I think that Man, I think for women better. this this is different. I know people don't like it, but I, it's not fair for women and men. Being born a woman, there's certain proclivities that we get. We're hot. Mm-hmm. We get. We don't have to do much to get access to a good life. You mm-hmm. know, we just have to take care of ourselves and look good. And that's it. We can get provided for. We can get six figures, a million. We can get it all, really. Yeah. Men, it's different, right? You guys have to work and struggle and create and look good and all the looks. So matters. much harder. So much harder. With that guy. being said, so each side has both. I know a lot of people say that I beat up on women. It's not true. I'm very hard on men, just as I am on women. If you're my client, I'm going to push you. But with women, we sort of get like the shit in the st- of the stick in some in some ways. Women can be with another woman, and that's okay. She's, mm-hmm. you know, she, there's nothing. But if a man goes and explores with a man, mm. he, I'm sorry, he's gay. You're not exploring. You're gay. You're homosexual. Mm-hmm. I believe that. And it's the same thing with men. You guys can fuck hoes all day, and you're not a whore. But women, if your body count is high, then sorry, you're a whore. You cannot sleep around the way a man can and be respected. I'm sorry. I fully agree. But yep. women don't like that. Mm-hmm. They get mad at me. Yeah, and then because they send me hate comments on TikTok, and I'm such a nice person. I'll, I'll tell you, and this is essentially <laughs> my theme. Do you know how hard it is for a guy to go out and bang a bunch of women? Yeah. Do you know how hard it is for? I mean, he needs to be good looking. He needs to make resources. money. He needs to have the resources. He's got to talk right. He needs to, he he needs needs to, to have a game. Say. He needs to like look good. He needs to like. He needs to have it time? going on. Got to have time. All to do that. that. So for a guy to do that, like he needs to be like. The fucking man. Mm-hmm. Okay, now for a girl to be a hoe, she needs to just go put a dress on just and put text. some lipstick right. on and say, I'm going some out tonight. Don't even mind. Some guy will bang her that yeah. night. Some Facts. guys don't even care for the lipstick. They're just like, are you home? That's true. You up? That's correct. We've all sent that text, W-Y-D. gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. W- or W-Y-A, W-Y-A. Excuse me. Where are you at? Where are you at? What you doing? You Can up? Can I pull through? Yeah. So we it's a lot them. different for correct. a guy and a girl. I totally it's agree. It's just different. And women, the more like... I really love women. I teach women to have 11 forms of orgasms. I teach women how to be provided for and satisfied and all these things that m- the world does not teach women. The world does not want women knowing the power they have in their yoni. And I teach them that. I teach them pleasure, all that stuff. The world doesn't want women, women to knowing. understand that the power that they have, that there's a book called The Power of the Pussy and I'm not affiliated with it in any way, shape or form. However, it's true. There's is that a- what you meant by yoni? Yoni is yoni. the Sanskrit yeah. word for that. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm all about women. However, women, we're just, we're not equal to men. It's, it's, it's not fair, but like if there's a war, who's going to defend us? Are they going to put the women on the front line? No. No. They're putting the men on the front we line. We would all be damned if I had to hold a gun. Correct. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Do we saw that Candace Owens clip? Uh, close it. I want to Okay, but it's still, it's on Tyler's Slack. Slack. Okay. Go to the Slack and... Um, Look at the slack from Adam. Yeah, we can pull that up. Oh, we can talk about attachment styles. Great. You want to do that? In a a lot of men really resonated with that one on TikTok. I had mm. so many men on Instagram that were like, "Yes, yes, they feel that way." Mm. But I think there's a shame in men admitting it, so it's a good thing. Yeah. Just go to Adam. No, scroll it's up. already yeah. there. Are you scroll learning up. about attachment styles? Right there, boom. I need to learn more about oh, attachment styles. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Would help me. Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Let's get the volume. This is what we we're talking about being masculine. Wait. Versus feminine energy versus what, what a man should be doing versus not. You familiar with Candace Owens? Looks like an older clip. Um, but go ahead, hit the volume, hit this. Hit if this I clip. could pick every single day, I would choose every single day to be a woman. You know what I mean? Like, Me I do too. not want to be a man. The men are out there fighting the wars, they're the mm-hmm. ones falling off of roofs and, and dying. And uh, nobody, let me, there's like a, a meme on the internet that says, nobody calls a feminist when there's an emergency. <laughs> like, <laughs> and seeing this, oh, this anti yeah, I love her. masculinity is bad. No, masculinity is great. I love masculinity. I do too. I need a shirt that just says, I love masculinity. It's great. I, I love men who. Love women. Right. <laughs> a lot of men don't. Simple. Simple. I, don't women women. I agree. There's some incredible. truth. And there is some truth. But unfortunately, when you when you are starting to conflate masculinity with rape, which is what's happening. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. Like if you're masculine, then you're a predator. No. Masculinity is is the opposite of femininity. And I like being feminine and men should like being masculine masculine and they're it's symbiotic and it's beautiful and it's now being corrupted yeah. by this whole myth of like the white privileged male predator um who's masculine. Right, I mean, it's, a, it's a horrible time to be a white male. If I could pick every yeah. single day, uh, Adam. I mean, geez, every s- Listen, I mean, things Not are going Columbia. okay. Things are going okay in my life. Back in Columbia. Yeah. I just got back from Epps yeah, power trip. Columbia. Yeah, but um, 
what's your response to that video? I mean, I agree with her a thousand percent. You know, men men come to me to help them coach them. Like, what do I say to women? How do I get a woman? Da, da, da. And because they feel like they can't like be assertive and they can't like say anything without women calling me too, or they mm-hmm. can't like, you know. And I think us as women, we have to do better. And I'm not not acknowledging the women who've suffered through some kind of rape or something. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. My heart goes, I have a nonprofit that works with victims of human trafficking to holistically rehabilitate them. I'm all about believing. However, there has to be a line yeah. where we say, when are we going to let men be men? Where, when are we let, going to let them be Shiva? And I, and do you think that this is exclusive here in the United States or in Western civilizations? I think in Because if you said that you grew up in Thailand? Yes. Okay. I've been all over the world. Yeah. I, I believe that um, in the, um, like the Andrew Tate, uh, he's more inclined to those cultures in the Middle Eastern cultures. Yes. You know why? Because the women do the stuff that I do. They yeah. really do like worship their, their husband. Also and in Eastern Europe where he actually lives. Yeah. Correct. Same, same kind I'm of situation. I'm not asking that my son's father's from yeah. Europe, but in Eastern Europe, I know it's like that too. The yeah. women, they are like, what can I do to serve your needs? And this is like, ask your spouse this question, both sides. Yeah. Every day, what can I do to serve you more? Like, if more people did that, we'd have less problems in relationships. So this is, you know, you I, I mean, I, I agree, but like at the same time, I feel like society's getting this connotation with masculine as like, because there's extremes to everything. I think Correct. as That's a society, right. we're extreme, we're extreme, we are, Republican, we're, yeah. we're extreme, Democrat, we're extreme, white supremacist, whatever, we're yeah. extreme, black lives matter. There's just so much polar opposite energy. Mm-hmm. There's no like coming together. Right. So when, as a female, like if we if we say masculine and so on, and, and I don't think like this, but I'm just talking in general. Mm-hmm. If when we say masculine, we're thinking of like rape. We're thinking of like toxic things toxic think, masculinity yeah. Yeah. as as just a generalization i'm not talking about myself and that's what's wrong with society though because when we think masculine energy guys are like oh i don't want to be masculine because women think it's toxic women think i'm a white supremacist women think i'm uh rapey like i think that's right. the connotation well, that's we kinda, give was masculinity that, and it's bad like it's sad the toxic masculinity yes. that's not even a thing anymore just being masculine is a bad thing now yeah but, like, this is, but we're this getting is it so- confused we're the it's all blurred in society mm-hmm. now. If you're going to be a masculine male, you're a you're a I'm, white supremacist. You're a rapist. You're like that's that's the, the connotation. But connotation. The main the issue is like men doesn't men don't really understand how to be that's masculine. That's what I was yeah. going to say. What are the qualities that masculine Shiva energy represents? And for me, those are simple. They are unwavering pre, the unwavering presence. They are steadfast. They are unmovable. They are unshakable. Like. To have a man that will sit there when you try to do a little Shakti, we call them Shakti storms, like just throw fed or try to get, because women are always what, wanting what? Attention. Presence. Presence. Attention. That's mm. another way. They just want to be seen. We're in Validation. In, in compliments. In validation and seen are just a little different. I disagree just slightly with those because remember, if we're doing the universe and polarity, the masculine is the cosmos, the unchangingness of the sky, even after the... Uh, earthquake or hurricane that just happened if you look up at night into the cosmos it's like nothing happened up there it's like whoa was there really a hurricane down here that's the masculine energy the feminine is the hurricane right so women nature wants to be seen women always want to be seen it doesn't mean Uh, always validated mother nature's feminine energy so women crave that and we'll do anything including pick a fight just to get because some energy is better than none at all even if you're yelling mm. at me, that's energy when before you were working or on your paper on your game. So we have to understand the qualities that women that women really crave and foster those. Men don't be unmovable. That means telling women no. No. And you, and you think if you tell a woman no that she's going to leave you. No. She might be annoyed at first because women men don't do that. Yeah. They don't step up and put down their foot and say, no, this is not how it's going down to respect you, but I'm the leader of this house. I'm the leader of this relationship. You follow and I support you and make sure that you have a, a path to walk on. Mm-hmm. But men are afraid to do that. That's why in the previous video mm-hmm. you said it forces men to do that. Because mm. women want a man with a backbone. Who's at the end yeah. of the day? Correct. They don't want a pushover pussy boy, right? No, they <laughs> want right, right. right. I, mean, I was just talking with my friends. We're like, yeah, okay, what's true. your type? We want masculine men, and yes. I feel like the, but like I was trying to say, like with the connotation of a masculine man, a lot of men out there are just not as masculine anymore. And so I agree with a lot, but like I think there's just still so many extremes out there. That's why there is. It's just everything's a blur. Like you don't really know what's right. You don't know what's wrong. You don't know what's white, what's black. Everything's like 
changed in mm-hmm. this world and yeah. it's very confusing but i just i know in my head and i'm probably gonna get hate for this like men are like above women they are and they're it's superior. the truth like they are. it's just what do you mean by above women I, I don't mean like oh they're like better or whatever like there's qualities women have that are better than men there's mm-hmm. qualities men have that are but men are stronger faster you know the stereotypical and then women are more of the nurturer the you know well they're supposed per- to be but that's yeah. died out but too that's now. Mm-hmm. that's the black and that's like the very yeah. essence of the core women should not be presidents women should not be in positions of leadership because we think emotionally we do not think ra- rationally logically i'm not okay maybe not leadership but extreme leadership i'm sorry i said it we are too emotional. We are meant to nurture, love, and care for our children and for our our, our God, our partner. Mm-hmm. We are not meant to be in a place where you have to make critical, logical decisions that could affect the planet. You do realize no. that as you as a woman saying that, you might get hate online oh. from women. Join, you don't, Fine. You don't, you, yeah. But you're not going to get canceled. I'm not going to gonna. Get you could say that all day long. You can scream that from a mountaintop. Because I'm a woman. Once you say that as a man. I know what happened to Mr. Tate. You know that something like a Mr. Tate, you'll get canceled. Correct. You're saying they things still like do, this. No, Adam, they still try to cancel me. They've taken my Instagram account six really? times. They've taken, I've been deplatformed from everything, including LinkedIn. They took my LinkedIn. So you too have been canceled. I can't get saying. my LinkedIn back. Um, my uh, Instagram is sixth. TikTok is five. Facebook, they took page where I had real my business page. They've taken me off of everything. Well, let's just talk about extremes for a second. Um, I don't think anything should be too extreme. I'm a very moderate type of person. Right. Okay. I'm like I, in the middle of the road. Okay. Like a- anything extreme can't, presents can't a problem. Can't yeah. Okay. So the last month, I'm going to walk you through what I've had in the last thirty days. Let's go. So from September first. To October 1st. September 1st, we had the vault. Mm-hmm. Okay. I interviewed Robert Kiyosaki, who's arguably the greatest met him. You know, financial guy mm-hmm. of our lifetime. And I said, Robert, I'm not gonna have we're not gonna do an entire interview. We spoke for an hour. I'm not gonna ask you about money. I'm not gonna ask you about real estate. I'm not gonna ask you about politics. All we're gonna talk is relationships. Mm. I said, interesting. He goes, Okay, great. He goes, I'm all in. He goes, you know, I used to be a big fat beta, right? I go, wow. wow. He said this. Worth a hundred something million dollars. Mm-hmm. Interesting. First conversation. From there, where'd we fly to? Was that Madrid? Yes. When did we yes. go to Vegas? We went to Vegas before. Yeah. Vegas. Vegas. But that wasn't yeah. even, yeah. that That wasn't September. That was in right, right. Um, in August. Yeah. I'm talking about the, the month of, of September. He can't even remember yeah. what yeah, happened. I'm saying it's been, <laughs> then we flew to Madrid been and over. I talked to the king of masculinity these days, mm-hmm. Andrew Tate. We did a mm-hmm. five hour mm-hmm. marathon interview gone viral ridiculous so i'm thinking all right cool let me understand how this guy thinks a little bit more he was born in america i love madrid okay madrid was great Mm -hmm. yeah um but all right i got the mindset i got the mindset he's lived in 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 europe middle eastern vibes kind of throughout where he was fighting all right cool that's how we got that culture got it all right so we came back been doing the podcast. Last week we did a whole. It was like a red pill woman podcast. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ali okay. was on. I saw. Ali was on. You didn't invite it. me. I'm red well, pill. Well, now <laughs> you're invited know. back. Believe me. <laughs> like, and then the coup de gras is I go to Colombia this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's been some time since I've traveled internationally, but I've never gone to South America. I've been to Mexico. I've been to Costa Rica, but never to South America. And I, I mean, flying to Madrid, I would not. I would consider that's a Western, that's you know, Western mm-hmm. Europe. You know, that's a Western society. But here's my point: Colombia. Mm-hmm. You spent. I spent a week in Colombia. Okay. Imagine if you're spending 15, 20 years like Andrew Tate, immersed in that. Yeah. I go down there, and here's the analogy that I'll give you: uh, Me and my boys were, if we're having dinner here in Miami or New York or in L.A. in Chicago, pick a city, and you're just hanging with your guys in a baddie walks in the room okay all you guys oh shit check out this girl boom and all you guys are gonna be like damn like we all know this thing right in colombia there are baddies me there's baddies everywhere yeah first everywhere everywhere okay wink wink eric if you want to (laughs) come um me and my boys walk in a room another guy or two good looking guys talk about six 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 all that we were strolling we're looking good every single freaking girl is like hola papi gringo i like or to the point where I was, I felt 
how a girl feels <laughs> for the in a time. club for right. the first time in my life. Yeah. Oh, come here. Yeah, come what do you do? Like, yeah. These are girls at a bar. Mm-hmm. They're not even hookers. No. Okay. I mean, everyone's got a price, <laughs> especially in Colombia. Like, like, yes. Yeah. But I was like, okay. So this, the, 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 <laughs> it's rewiring. This, but <laughs> so speechless. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. I don't know <laughs> I go for it. It. Where am I going with this thing right now? Yeah, but. but the point is this: once, you, and I'm, I'm using Colombia yeah. as an, as a metaphor as to what Andrew Tate is using yes. in Bucharest, Romania, yes. or in you know whatever city in uh, Dubai that he's in, or wherever you know, not not Western no. Europe, Eastern, Eastern Europe, the Eastern Bloc, Middle East, Russia, mm-hmm. Middle East. You know, everything that we that we're realizing here in the United States is very new. This third wave feminism is very, very new. Correct. The last forty years. It's detrimental. Okay? And this is where I talked about we needed a correction with first wave feminism. We needed a correction with second wave feminism. Third wave feminism has been a little detrimental. Yes. Okay. But at the same time, these women in Colombia like are very dependent on the man. They need yes. They need the man. And I don't think women today are gonna want to live a life of dependence they on don't. a man. They They're don't. not going to, they'll, they'll say, I want a man. I will, you know, be uh, submissive to my man, but I'm not going to That's gonna a hard wholly, sell even. The submissive part is a hard sell. Or whatever comes with, yes. I'll, 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 men lead, women follow. That's mm-hmm. fine. I'll play my role. You know, like, uh, Ish, yeah. they talk about the man being the head, but the woman being the neck. I mm-hmm. believe that your mm-hmm. film, he talks about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the man being the CEO, but the, you know, the, the woman being the CEO. Oh, like there's yeah. an importance there. Correct. But in Colombia, it's like, or even the Middle East, it's the man is a hundred percent. The woman is zero percent. That's correct. So mm-hmm. I don't think women in America today are even going to mm-hmm. freaking play that game I, at all. That's an extreme. Like that's, that's, my that's point. the extremes we're talking and this about. This is what I talked about. I don't there's, think extremes are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see okay? that and I'm like, oh, you, but you then go I to, see this and I'm like, uh. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, the point, <laughs> exactly. So there needs to be some moderation, is my point. There does, but there, 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 there does. That's not correct. I'm like, how do I say that? There should be some moder- modifications. However, women have, women in America have been brainwashed. They've believed a lie that they don't need a man, that they can have a huge bank account and cats and a giant dildo and they'll be good for life. And trust me. Most of my clients are those women. Really? They cannot get a man. I'll get rid and of the cats. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing wrong. <laughs> I'll give me the big old dildo. <laughs> and uh, nothing it's wrong with cats. Don't start talking shit about cats now, guys. The they want to see Saws upset. The problem is women believe this lie. Yeah. They believe it. And but they, is it that they just don't need a man or they, don't, they only want the top echelon man and they're not going to settle for just like a run in the mill dude. That that's part of it, but what it really is is they do not want to do the big S words, the surrender and the submit. They don't do it. I've had women in my TikTok comments say, I would literally die. I would rather die than submit to it. Literally, and I quote, not just one woman mm-hmm. saying, I'd rather die than submit or surrender to a man. Well, it's probably because I'm making an assumption here, is that you know, we talk about the lack of the nuclear family, the, yeah. the, the lack of two parent households. And let's just say that a single mother who's raising a daughter for a decade or two is going to say, don't you ever have to rely on a man? That's correct. Don't mm-hmm. you do it, girl. I've been down on that path. You go to go to school, you get a job, you make your own money. Do not rely on a man. Correct. Do not rely on a man. And of course, the young girl goes, yeah, of course. Of course not. And so you're just going to grow up thinking, I don't need a man. I don't need like okay. everything you talked about. I, OK, well, let me, let me yeah, touch go on push this because we're like, OK, I've seen friends who've been in engagements with men who are supposed to take care of them. Yep. And then they completely are like, bye, cut them off. And then they're who left straight off. The man cuts them off and they have nothing because they surrendered. They submitted to the man. They literally have nothing. And they're out cold in the world where he's bringing home his other bitches. Yeah. Who knows? I, I've seen that. So which I, I get, which I, I get. don't. I, so I don't believe relying on the man, but that doesn't mean you don't need a man. Mm-hmm. So that means you have your own thing going on. You're your mm-hmm. own entity. You're good by yourself. I think but separate I think bank you need accounts a, are very, I, I, yeah. I advocate for those. I, I don't think I do. you just, I think, it, I think there's a separate separation there than relying and need. Correct. There has Makes to be, sense. again, it's all about polarity. I believe in having your own residence too. If you can afford it, that you should not live with your partner. Um, if you can, if you can afford it, because it weakens the polarity. That's the number one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can't afford it, that you—that's if you're dating, obviously. When no, you get married, no, 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 no. 
in marriage as well. What? So the, you yeah. should not live no, with no, each other? No. Uh, no. You don't so, think that a husband and wife again, should live together? Again, again, what about with kids? Okay, and, and I'll, I'll address all it all. Again, I'm speaking, yes, I'm speaking extremes, but yes. and couples do modify, but you'd be surprised. Ask some realtors now what homes are selling and what homes people want. They want them with separate bedrooms and separate bathrooms. Okay, but that's... Oh, but it's still the same home. That, okay, but they're the in the same, same home. The same okay, home. separate bathrooms. Same I'm home is good. I'm okay with that, though. <laughs> the, the, yeah. re, here's the reason why. The reason why is it's very simple. And then you have to see and look and see what's working now. If it's 50%, we know all the stats on marriage. We don't need to go over yeah. it. So obviously what we're doing now is not working. Agreed. Now the tantric perspective is all about polarity. That's what I teach. So polarity weakens because everyone sits at home and Netflix and chills. When you do that over time, that charge isn't there anymore. And you don't want to fuck your wife. You don't want to fuck your husband. And that splits up marriages. Mm -hmm. So my, the, not my concept, the concept that I teach and live by is that the more you're actually away from each other, the more you come together, it's actual conscious time together where the man mm -hmm. is present with you. You're not working business deals and I'm in the same room and we're calling that spending time. No, you're like with me, right? Your phone, yeah. your iPad's put down. I, you know, I satisfy your sexual needs you hold me you cuddle we love we connect we do all that stuff together that's quality time mm. when you come into my space you feel my feminine energy is charged and when i come into your space i feel the same but is if a man is working all day yes and you guys live in the same home when he comes home wouldn't you say that's like enough space i mean it, it even it, if you have like separate rooms i get getting ready separate like i'm not yeah, opposed to i that. mean i'm saying the extreme is se separate houses but at least separate rooms where but you're not spending every night together because yeah. what happens mm -hmm. is in the same bed so what happens is at night you know about like your chakras and your bodies you have mm -hmm. five different bodies your energy bodies actually connect and merge at night mm -hmm. and then it weakens the polarity you notice like your grandparents or you know like people have been married a long time they start looking like one another and then they're like, oh, this is my best friend. I guarantee you they're not fucking, right? Yeah, well, they're 80 years old. <laughs> oh, gross. Uh, but, well, <laughs> I'm not even By saying. the way, a real fun fact, the highest age bracket of STDs, STDs. is like 65 plus. It's in the nursing plus. homes. It's nursing <laughs> These old people are paying. Here, here, look, I know that a lot of time, a lot of what you say is ideological, yeah. not necessarily realistic. Yeah. Here's what I will say is realistic. I don't know many couples are going to have separate homes or even separate bedrooms. Yeah. I'm saying many. I, I, yeah. I am sure it's been nights that apart, it does exist. But even Victoria was like, well, separate bathrooms. That's yeah. nice. Here's what I, I recommend. And I did this. Yeah. Um, the girl that I was with for a long time, um, we had, it was uh, like the main master Sweet. bathroom okay. in, a, in a loft. And then there's like a second smaller bathroom, what have you. Um, and what I realized was if we were getting ready in the same bathroom to go on, like, on a date or out, and I saw her putting the dress on, makeup, all this, and stuff. The, saw her putting the makeup on, and you know, it's like it wasn't as appealing as listen. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna use the downstairs bedroom, mm -hmm. our bathroom. You do your thing upstairs. I'll obviously I'll be ready an hour before you. I'm just gonna go. I'll have a <laughs> drink. I'll game, be sitting whatever. down. But when she comes down the stairs you and I see that. the final product, I'm like. We love right, it. We don't even need to go. Yeah, we like don't let's stay in the go. goddamn house. Correct. It's because the guy, want, you know, I don't want to see the process of the whole situation. That's yeah. polarity. I what you're feeling yes. is that, and that's what happens when you live together. You sleep together. Yes. You shit together. You get ready. It's too much. So I know what I'm saying is extreme. Yes. But what I tell my couples that's that are living yes. together, at least take one or two nights where you don't, maybe you don't sleep together. Mm. Maybe especially if you're traveling, like a lot of men who yeah. travel. You don't want that. I like the cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but eventually <laughs> cuddling <laughs> leads to just being best friends and not that you want your man to want uh, to fuck that's you. That's true. You want him. And the men, remember, men yeah. are visual and they need to be excited. Uh, if they're cut, men don't care about cuddling. They do. And unless they're more beta, the more they'll want to cuddle. I do care about cuddling after, after sex. After sex. Because <laughs> you, right. But yeah. it's not like high priority. You're not like, God, I can't wait no, to cuddle. You, you're on to something here is that because I've been in relationships that you just get too comfortable. You get it's too like, comfortable. And then we you go to bed. It's like, you know, like she puts a pimple cream on. Like I'm wearing my glasses. Like, sleep tape it's over like your mouth. It's like there's nothing sexy about two people that are just. But if it's like, all right, we're going to be in that bedroom, whatever. And then, you know, Correct. bang, bang, bang. 
you know, maybe cut, whatever. Like, I do get that there's, again, moderation. You gotta find the balance. Moderation. If you're spending the same, if in the same bathroom getting ready, same bedroom every single time, same, same, Eating, same, same, sleeping, same. working, all this It's going to get stale. Redundant. And stale. that's exactly entropy, what you're saying. Entropy, atrophy. It's the law of the universe. I don't make the rules. I just tell you ways that you can biohack the system. People don't just like it because yeah. they're like, well, I want to be close every minute of the day. Great, great, great. Well, mm-hmm. great. No. But it's not going to work in the end. Aha. Just look at the stats. The numbers don't lie. I got to create a new Excel spreadsheet. In my <laughs> <head>. <laughs> <laughs> you got imagine homework tonight. Imagine if, if you're a girl out there, imagine if, Okay, you're living in a two bedroom place with your dude. All right, great. Date night. Boom. Go back to his room. Mm-hmm. Lay it on him. Yeah. Bang. You go, all right, honey, have a good night. Go in the other room. Oh He's going to be like, He's going to be like, Yo, that's, where's she at? Where's she like, at? And it's going to put something you. in his brain to want to see you more. Yeah. That's my little trick, ladies. Leave. But like you didn't leave. You just go to the, next, leave, go to the next room. Mm-hmm. You know, you're still there. But you're not. Mm. <laughs> Guys, we are coming to the end of this episode. I, I, I like I usually I have a whole page of notes. Mm-hmm. You know how many pages we got through today? One. Yeah. <laughs> we got through one. Janelle, you're so interesting. Thank you. Victoria, uh, you, you said you just said you're doing a, a new a Excel spread- spreadsheet. I'm so confused. What are you confused <laughs> about? That everything you've been told has been a lie. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a lie. No, seriously, what are you confused no, about? No, I'm not. Con- I mean, I just whole no, new what, world. No, what, what, what has she opened your eyes about? I don't know, the separate bedrooms. <laughs> so, yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I think I think the, um, the, the, the saddest thing is for a relationship, because listen, if you're going to be living with somebody and married to somebody or dating somebody, obviously you love that person. That's right. Obviously, you know? Uh, but the saddest thing is that when the, the you stop looking good for your man or he stops looking good for you and you just I don't believe in that. You See, go, no. uh, well, you don't believe in what? Like stop looking good for your okay, man. No, you I always agree. need to do I, that. Hundred uh, percent right. agree. But you kind of go from like the fun, sex, crazy relation, that fun crazy stuff polarity. to yeah, we're just best yeah. friends. It's Let's like go work out you, we're just and then you just turn into roommates. That's right. Is what happens after a while, mm-hmm. and the sex goes from every day to every week to, to every maybe month. once a month then to, to like holidays. A, and then, and that Absolutely. is sort of the downfall of a relationship. I feel like that's why you got to prioritize having your own thing, your own friends, your own things to do in life. And so does a guy. You got to let the guy have a boys' night, a mm-hmm. golf game, and you don't join in no. that. I feel like you see a lot of girls they go on social oh media God, like, ah, so- oh, we're gonna like join into the guy, like you know, making fun, but like. There's like, a reason why it's called it's guys like, night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, oh, I'm going to dress up as a dude and join in guys night. Like there's like all these they're funny TikToks. Yeah, on, like, yeah. Hey, well, I think it's beers, funny, bro. but it's like yeah. subliminal messaging. Like we don't want our guys to have guys night. I'm yeah. like, no, please do your guys thing yeah, so yeah, I can go to the spa and do my girls right. thing yeah. and be away from By the you. way, most guys nights, they're actually just doing you know, playing poker, eating chicken wings, yeah. watching sports. Yeah. That's a guys night. Mm-hmm. Now maybe they go out, you know, if they go out in the town doing guys night. That's a most different guys, story. Yeah. Most guys are going to do just the normal things. But then there's some guys where it's guys it's night. It's guys night and they're going They're out. looking for some stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're Columbia out style. I know. No comment. Oh. My, my business partner and actually that guy. <laughs> the look on your no, face No, my business right partner yeah. and that guy just got back from a 10-day hiatus in Columbia. So yeah. they told me about everything that went down there. I know it all. Well, I'm sure that they were uh, donating a they lot of were, time to their churches. Mm. and They uh, were feeding very the homeless. giving in the community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will say the one thing about Columbia, speaking of money, not that I'm the director of tourism. Everything is 75% off. Yes. <laughs> the food, director of tourism. the drinks, mm-hmm. the partying, the the Ubers, the everything. 75% the women, off. 70, everything. So if I, if I say, all right, guys, let's, let's have a, let's go, drinks on me, we'll go to the bar. What's a, you know, what's a round of drinks here? 100 bucks, 25 bucks in Columbia. We go and it, it's lunch, dinner, whatever. What's a, what's a meal? Nice, 400 bucks. It's, you know, 100 bucks. Boom. So it's, very well, save that money vibes, which we w- which we enjoy. Uh, do we have any super chats that we want to address? We do have some super chats to okay. address. By the way, this episode flew by. I know very quickly. Oh. Uh, so we have a super chat uh, by uh, Marcellus Wallace. Uh, how would you recommend a one? How would you recommend? How would you recommend one find a sugar mama? <laughs> I'm also based out of OC. A sugar I'm mama. also based out of OC. Did he yeah. really? Yeah, this is yeah, so yeah, yeah. Funny. <laughs> On my podcast, we talked so about dark. the Illuminati Sugar Daddy referral program. Oh, oh. My God. Well, if you're in OC, um, you got to go to the quiet woman or just Hinge. Either one. 
Oh, sugar mama. Sugar mama. Or you get to the referral yeah. program. Then what is we, this program? I'm so yeah, curious. listen to my what podcast. It's a deep. It's a very deep, deep hole of a program that I found out in Miami. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, this is OC though. Can okay. We, but I mean, if you're in Miami, just okay. All right. Join gotcha. in. Join and then I have another one by John. Question for Janelle: Do I need to take a woman on a date to get her sexually interested in me, or can I be upfront for the first time when I meet her? Um, I'm going to say depends on the woman, but most, most 90 some percent of women are going to want you to take her out on some kind of date. Yes. Maybe it doesn't have to be crazy. My thing is you can try to get away with it. And most women, they, they probably will just settle. Um, when I was dating, um, on hinge, I had guys that one guy tried to take, most guys knew they had to spend a couple hundred dollars to, to get anywhere with me. Okay. But one guy tried to take me to some like islands burgers. And I mm. just said, listen, if you want this to continue, the restaurant will be nicer next time. And he took me out on three other dates that were expensive. So mm. you got to ask for what you want. Gotcha. So, yeah. Those were the ones we had. Today. Guys, thank you for the questions. You want to, you want to address that last uh, story or we'll, we'll keep it moving. You want to do it? Uh, no? yeah, I, think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. I think okay. we had a lot of yeah, good yeah. content yeah. here today. I wow. think it was really good. Wow, 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 wow. Yes. All right. Um, so you'll appreciate this. I have so many more questions. By the way, you live in the OC. Yes, I So am. the next Newport. time we're back here, we're going to get into some of these questions that I hear about tantric sex and Kama okay. Sutra and pleasing a man and short term. We kind of addressed some of that today. But you tell me when you want me to come back. I'm here. <laughs> um, but here's what we do do at the end. We have something at the end called uh, the happy ending, uh, oh, where everyone gets to basically <laughs> weigh in and give their final thoughts okay. of uh, a message that you want uh, the audience to know about you. What you know, uh, your biggest takeaway of the episode was. Um, so let's go start with Nat, Victoria. We'll end with Janelle, and uh, and uh, hopefully, the audience here. got some value today. Awesome. Eric well, Tate over there is, is yes. saying, I'm good. I'm I didn't good. want to. Do like, you want to say anything? No, no, no. I'm good. You don't want to say good, anything? Good conversation, man. That's Thank great. Thank you, yeah. bro. You enjoyed this episode. <laughs> I did. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good task right yes. there. Yes. <laughs> um, I think my closing message or my happy ending message would be um, understand the extreme when it comes to the this type of conversation and these topics um, and then determine kind of where you want to place yourself and, and you know, move accordingly. Uh, but I think it's important that you do listen and you understand to some of the facts that was spoken today um, because that will allow you to move accordingly and um, find really what you're looking for. So it's better just to expect the worst than um, kind of just be oblivious to it and then not know how to, you know, uh, execute. So that's kind of my happy ending message. Love that. Miss Victoria. I guess I want a beta mill. I don't really <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This, is no. a, this is a very um interesting this makes dating even harder in my opinion because now I'm so? like I'm like, what the fuck? Do you think like, it's harder or do you think so, it's now forcing you to like I'm just like I have no idea. <laughs> um but yeah, I don't want to go to Impossible Burgers or whatever that was. Like, take me on a nice day. Mm -hmm. We'll see what goes from there. <laughs> I will be running Excel spreadsheets in my head. Uh, Victoria, still. how old are you? 29. 29. By the way, you're perfect age. You you're look great. Amazing. What I will say is this for a girl like you is that you just need to be very intentional with your time. Because um, time, other than health, is your most important commodity. Mm -hmm. So... You can go on a date or two, but the last thing that I would encourage a beautiful girl like you is to waste another two, three years with a guy that won't put a ring on it, what have you. And next thing you know, you're 33 and you're like, ah, these guys out here. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I'd rather be 41 with a 26 year old. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, okay. <laughs> if that happens, like, you know what? If it doesn't happen, I'll just be Tell like, me. but you want to have out. kids though. She already had kids. I have a child. She um, has a child. I'm going to have a couple more. I think it's up in the show. air for me. That's not, is, what's that? I think that's up in the air. You don't even know you want to have kids. She's not certain on it. Well, if you don't yeah. want to have kids, I mean, I have health things. That's a whole different She can have one. That's a brain tumor. Let the universe decide. Yeah, you know, that's. I don't plan that out in an Excel spreadsheet. Got like it. Mary well, Joseph, <laughs> John, Sue. Yeah, whatever. But the Excel but yeah. spreadsheet, you're going to have to do a couple different inputs. Uh, yeah, different we, than... I mean, we're whole, starting a whole brand new one yeah. after this episode. New awesome. I can't wait to well, see it. Well, this is what Janelle Gordon does for you, baby. She <laughs> blows some minds. I just do it. My mind is blown. My, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> my body. My, my body. Janelle, I've yes. absolutely loved everything you had to say. Thank you. Some things have been controversial. Some things have been completely spot on. But that's what we love around here. We that's love right. open discourse. We love debate, debating topics. Uh, and if uh, Eric Tate over there says it was a good episode, you know it was a good episode. <laughs>
So give us your final takeaways and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So a lot of people, and I take this at the highest compliment, um, they've called me the female Andrew Tate. And I, <laughs> I'm telling you, and I, it's, that's a huge honor, by the way. But the, the point is, I literally just speak the truth. And I know it's hard. It's like a hard pill to swallow, right? Knowing that Santa Claus isn't real. The Easter Bunny isn't real. That, you know, most men only last eight minutes. Those are all sad truths. But the more that we can actually like wrap our head around it and accept the truth, the easier life will be. So I would just challenge you to just, you know, take all the preconditioned programming that you've been given, the dogma, the religious dogma, all that stuff. Take it out of the window and just have like an empty cup kind of syndrome and then fill it with what you will but just look and see what's working and what's not it's easy to see what's working Mm. relationships and my book unfuck your sex life is going to help to kind of really rewire the brain and to understand these concepts and and a manual a rule book approach to intimacy and relationships today that's not too extreme okay can we make sure that we put um her book, the link to the book below in the yes. in the, the description. Yes. Also, Victoria has a podcast, mm-hmm. right? Can we yep, put the link for that? Validated by Victoria. Validated by I Victoria. Yeah. Uh, let's cool make sure that we have peeps. all their links. Just and, go to uh, the ofactors.com. Let's put, com. Let's put that. And, and Eric, you don't have to do us all now. We'll have, uh, you know, Eric runs the entire... By the way, thank you, Eric, for doing this today. Yeah, he runs the entire, we want Eric He back. runs the entire production department. And so have one of your guys do that, would you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but th- this has been great. So thank you. Um, I mean, I have a note. My cup was empty. I was trying to fill it with tequila. So you <laughs> need to restock here. <laughs> Someone drank the bottle of tequila that I had we last week. So somebody's going to have some explaining to do. <laughs> it's not freaking Cinco de Mayo over here. Here's what I'll tell you. My biggest takeaway is I talk a lot about money, saving money and understanding money and and basically what comes with um, having success and having a man of status and being a, a career-driven man. And basically, um, I always say that your comfort zone will kill you. Like, you got to get out there and you got to get uncomfortable. And, you know, I made my name and I made my money in sales. It's very difficult. It's very uncomfortable, you know, whether it's cold calling or knocking on doors or just putting yourself out there and making some of yourself. Now, if you just want to have a basic salary and be a basic person, just you want to be a basic bitch, uh, <laughs> then just do some basic stuff. But if you want to get uncomfortable, if you want to have success, you need to get uncomfortable. Now, what I would say is, in terms of relationships, your comfort zone will also kill you. That's right. So if you get too comfortable and you're just kind of just, everything's just blase, blase, and you get bored and it gets stale, I've been in that type of relationship before, uh, it doesn't end well. So I know that traditional stuff teaches you to do certain different stuff and modern stuff teaches you to do certain stuff but basically i don't know these card um as far as your sex life goes you know switch it up yeah don't have to be in the same room you know like everything i talked about as far as like even as simple as like the girl getting ready in the other room right i like that mm-hmm. see, even too. like that, I like that. <laughs> you like that too it's a yeah. great option all right just basic stuff like that, that not Keep getting the polarity too alive comfortable yes. all right this has been great Guys, uh, thank you for listening. I know that we've got a, a lot of people listening today. Uh, we're closing in on 100,000. We'd yes, love to hit let's that. Like, subscribe. ASAP. We're almost there. Boom. I think we've hit uh, 350 on PBD Podcast. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're over 300 on yeah. our 380. I think we're over on 300 mm-hmm. on uh, the short clips. I think 380 on short clips. I think we're at 3.6 million on the on the main channel. We're fucking growing over here. Yeah. And we're only going to be growing growth. more. Be a part of the growth. And uh, subscribe and comment and share. I mean, not. I mean, you yes. Are. Subscribe, comment, share, and um, let's get this hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars, right? Make that too. Let's get these hundred. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred. Uh, hundred, 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 hundred. Uh, if we learned anything, we did the six figures. Exactly. Six foot. So you guys. Number know. one was make that money. That's All right. right. So yes. That's it. And when you make that money, you the save rest that will money. come. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We love you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Awesome.